How does a math teacher who has like a class full of mostly black students or even a few black students, how would they engage with this? The exact same way they'd engage with a classroom full of very poor white students. Do you think that this is like the, what's critiqued as like the liberal colorblindness approach? I think it's better than the progressive race realism approach. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny that that term actually is, is co-opted from critical race theorists. Whatever it is that's making them perform worse, right? <laughs> is it their like genes? Those, those... What? I, you got to no, tell me what are you talking, what are we talking no. about? If people yeah. want to talk about men and women, now I think there's more in similar than there is in difference, but dealing with the differences in men and women have made me erase like a lot of the racial sh that I saw because like men and women are distinctly separate creatures. And we, we, there are different things that we hardcore treat in different ways. And I can see those differences. But if you spend a lot of time around a lot of different people, I, like I don't think I would teach a black kid or a white kid math differently. At that point, yeah, I think yeah. we're starting to lose the plot. If we're calling a Chinese dude on a panel, white passing or white presenting, I think we need to take a step back and reanalyze what's going on in the well, conversation. Well, maybe we don't. Maybe Did I just hear you say, do black people? Dude, I've been thinking about it over and over again, okay? Okay. I gotta give it a 9 out of 10, okay? Top Gun Maverick, it just... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what happened. I wouldn't it even just, be mad if that be everything everywhere all at once. But yeah, it, it just evolved it in my brain. It was just... Have you watched it again? No, but like every time... I think I've watched now, it twice. Really? Then. The relationship shit needs to be cut from that It film. gets better if you just skip the relationship shit I know, shit I don't know why it's there. Because <laughs> yeah. all the airplane scene... It's not it's the cool. it's yeah. not it's the pilot, not the plane. Don't think, just do, Maverick. Don't think. Just do. And so it all is, the airplanes are so cool. They're so cool. The best experience is inside the movie theater. Um, I can't recreate that. Yeah. But they should release a cut in theater without the relationship shit, and it'll probably be like true. A cut out that movie. stupid shit. It'd be so good. Yeah. And they even have Val Kilmer in there. <laughs> if you ever like want to see a movie and you're kind of like, uh, I don't know, just get a Tom Cruise movie. It's never going to be bad. It, it's not bad. Um, Some of them are eh, but they're never bad movies ever. What about the 2017 Mummy movie? Wasn't that Tom Cruise? Didn't watch it, but I guarantee you it's probably meh. Like pretty good. Probably just meh. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Is it really, is it actually bad? <laughs> maybe meh. May, maybe meh. I'm, I'm a little nervous right now. I've got, I'm talking mm -hmm. from a big audience. You I haven't, haven't done this yep. really much. Good. I am. I very much am. Okay. Uh, and I'm a little ADHD crazy, so bear with me. Cool. Are we showing um, the excuses? All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, first of all, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to uh, butter you up a little bit first, but uh, congrats on beating Factorio. Thank you. Uh, I, I was watching last night when you finished it, so it was very, uh, very yeah, exciting to be was. part of. Good. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I oh, also, also another thing. Uh, earlier, I was listening to you talk about your your Focus uh, RS. Um, I thought Ford retired the Focus. Um, first of all, uh, you're on a thirty minute timeout. Okay. I do not drive a Focus. I drive a Ford Focus RS, okay? You can say, Destiny, you drive an RS, right? That's acceptable. Or Destiny, you drive a Focus RS, right? That's acceptable. Don't ever say that I drive a Focus ever, okay? That's like saying, don't you have two inches of dick? And it's like technically true, but I need you to talk about the other seven inches as well, okay? Do you understand what you're, do you understand what you're doing there? So. Take a 30 minute break, take a deep breath, understand what you did wrong, okay? Either RS or Focus RS. Don't ever say or tell a friend or ask me about a Focus, okay? Ever, don't ever do that. And um, I was I was empathizing with your frustration when people just call it a Focus. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you noticed at the canvassing event, the other, uh, the, well, not the other, but the Focus ST uh, that was there, that, that was me, so. Um, yeah, I tried to park next to you a few times because I thought it would be funny, um, but I didn't get the opportunity. Uh, what is, uh, what's the implication here? What? Are you trying to imply that we're similar? That you have similar problems with people saying that you drive a Focus because you have an ST? Uh, barely a step up from a Fiesta? Is that what you're trying to say right now? Talking shit about my ST? Yeah, I am talking shit about it. I don't want you to... Kind of okay, that's like, that's like Kobe Bryant talking about how like people don't appreciate me at my level of athleticism. And then like the high school basketball player is like, true dude, we don't get the props we deserve. Okay. I, I think the ST is at least like college player, maybe compared to the RS. What is the engine in the ST? 
<laughs> Honestly, I don't know. Okay, well, the RS has the EcoBoost 2.3 liter engine. Okay, that's in the Mustang V6 models. Okay, I, I know it's or an EcoBoost. V4, I, I just don't know. No, that, no, um... it should. I shouldn't have said V anything. It's not V6. It's an EcoBoost engine. Um, it's a good car. Yourself in a video game. What do you want to talk about? Right. Uh, what is race? I don't know. Yeah, but shouldn't you? Shouldn't you have an answer to that? It's not V4. V there is no such thing as a four-cylinder arrangement. I don't know why I said before. It's a Wait, no, no, I'm not Boston, no, I know. I'm sorry, but I said something <laughs> retarded, okay? Because the EcoBoost engine is not a V6, but I don't know why I said V6, but there's a, v there's a V6 and a V8 Mustang, but there must also be an EcoBoost Mustang, but my brain just short-circuited. Sorry. No one cares. Anyway, well, no, because yeah. be, somebody's going to make a Reddit post of it, and I'm already, I'm already <laughs> traumatized by it. What is race or ethnic? The problem is, I don't yeah, know. People race? mix up like race and ethnicity all the time, and I don't know if there's a... Like, they do. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I truly have no idea. Okay. Um, well, I mean... I for an example, to, like, like people talk about like uh, right. like Hispanic or Latino. I've heard both of these referred to as races and ethnicities, and I've heard some people virulently argue that one is like not a race mm. and not an ethnicity. And then I had that conversation with um, um, uh, with uh, Annalisha, and she mentioned something um, where she said something like her her race wasn't black or something like that. She said something like that, and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, but you're using this term completely wrong. And then I looked up in Canada, and in Canada, I think they use race and ethnicity completely the opposite that we do. So I have I have no sure. idea. Yeah. So go ahead. So, well, I, I was just gonna say, I think um, I think race. Uh, I think we we like if we were describing like a race, what we're what we're talking about more specifically is like a racialized group. Um, so like, so you want like to say like black is a race, like, like black people or Hispanic people or what or, or what? Yeah, well, well, exactly. So like, like, because like fundamentally, like, there's no like biological basis, right? Like, like, there's no genetic, like, racial categories. Well, um, so depends like, on careful on because that's absolutely not true. If you're gonna say well, like, if 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 we're talking skin color, that's a biological thing, obviously, right? Or a genetic thing, obviously. So, so let me let me, let me to clarify, like, uh, usually like a race is or like the word race historically at least like refers to a combination of like physical features but also like behavioral fe behavioral like characteristics well that's a way spicier thing i don't know if i would uh subscribe to that that's like a race realist or they've got like a new fancy term they use now if we're talking well, race. well exactly uh, but but that's like but that's like how race was historically constructed and used right like maybe like sure. it was you were presumed to be part of a, a racial group then you were you were assigned these or expected to like have these properties right um probably yeah that sounds about right sure yeah and and so um like uh, that's that's not we're not like we're not completely removed from that right like these were the fact that we still refer to like black people as black people and white people as white people even though like no one's like literally white and no one's literally black like these are these are referring to like these are massive umbrella terms but they, they only we only use these terms because of that racialized history right um i, I don't know i kind of want to know where we're going because i like I, I want to kind of sort of agree with you, but if this is like setting mm -hmm. up an argument and my agreement here like hinges on one of these important agreements, I'm probably gonna fight on a lot of this, but I don't know exactly where you're going uh, with this, so. I, I'm, I'm not like, I'm, I'm not trying to like set you up to, to knock you down or anything like that. Um, uh, but but I, I, am, I am saying that like the word white, like the fact that we use the word white, I think, I think the fact that we still use that means that we still are, we're, we're still dealing with like racialized context and so like i this, i mean our whole disagreement uh, at the canvassing event uh by the way uh everyone who's watching I, i'm the guy from the uh the canvassing video the first like seven minutes nice. um we, we were talking about like the words whiteness and stuff and i know you mm. don't like the word whiteness you, well you find i'm okay that, like, with really the word cringe, whiteness right? fine. that's okay we can talk oh, about it okay yeah well I, I i'm not saying that you like won't talk about it but like you you seem to like have not like it being used in uh i, I don't know you, you seem to have problems with it before well hold on <laughs> That's <laughs> I, that's like saying I have I, I have a problem with the word rape and it's like well I don't have a problem with the word rape and you're like oh well it seems like you don't like it when people are raped well it's like well yeah no. that's true so when you well, say like, I, don't, I, don't I have think a problem with the, the word same. whiteness I think there's a lot of really good conversations I have about like whiteness and concepts related to whiteness but that doesn't necessarily okay. mean I approve of like the way that it's used in like some of the school textbook stuff we were talking about that's a fundamental well, but it yeah. wasn't it okay to be clear though it wasn't a textbook right it was a book it was a book for instructors correct. So like, why shouldn't it be used in that context if it's like specifically like referring to like uh, like racialized structures? Well, because the, the the markedly different treatment between black people, black students, and white students in those texts made me feel very uncomfortable. That's why I didn't like them. 
So I, I don't necessarily agree that it was like it was advocating. I think maybe this this was part of the, the hinge of our disagreement there. Um, that I, I don't really agree that it was it was like prescribing to like treat these different students or to treat mm -hmm. students differently okay. uh, explicitly you, based um, on that. If you um, want, but, but, but I was gonna say if you want, because um, I'm not obsessed with Victoria anymore, uh, we can go through the textbook mm -hmm. right now if you want. Because I think we didn't we link it to each other in the DMs. If you want, we can start reading through stuff and yeah. I, if you want to do that. Yeah, we can. Um, but uh, I, I would say it does. It does advocate for things like, um, like, like trying to. Uh, like one of the. Well, I think one of the the things that you thought was cringy, which I, I might even agree with this one, or at least the framing of it, was like using, um, like, like referring to like figure, like mathematical figures from like racial, like connecting to your racial racial ancestry or something. Yeah, was like some one of the words. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but but I think I think that idea at least is still valuable. Like uh, um, like trying to connect a lot of like mathematical ideas back to like underrepresented like figures in mathematics that like might not have might not get so much appreciation. Um, sure, but I uh, think we have to do for like we we are, obvious reasons on a very broad level. This is like a very weird thing that's happened. Okay, like we've in some ways it feels like progressives have like looped around to some weird old conservative thought that is not true okay if you're an african american living in the united states you're way more american than you are african you have nothing to do with africa and if you go there the people probably aren't going to like you you're probably not going to like them and your culture is going to be totally different so i don't know like the comparing of like black people today as like well we need to tap into your like native tribalistic like ancestral roots and like you know bring out your inner Wakandan warrior or whatever some shit to do math problems that's like pretty weird to me like they're going to be able to vibe with whatever any white student in the classroom is going to be able to vibe with more than whatever African methods of teaching herbal medicine and mathematics I'm strumming a little bit but like yeah I don't know that just that framing <laughs> just seemed like kind of weird to me I didn't like that um but again yeah, I, I, I mean value, it, if you want to I'll make the invitation we can go yeah, through we, like the textbook we, we if you want to read it yeah, yeah. yeah. let right me So the, it's called uh, Dismantling Racism in Mathematics Instruction. And, and, and just so I can kind of reiterate my, my issue, the, like the reason this all came up. Um, so at, at the canvassing event, and I didn't know this was being recorded and it ended up on, on the canvassing video, which was kind of cool, but also terrifying. Um, but uh, I, I, was, I was pushing back because there's been several times uh, in conversations, usually with conservatives, um, where you'll mention this book and describe it as advocating that like black students need to like run around the classroom to learn math mm -hmm. um, because they, they like fundamentally need to learn math differently mm -hmm. um, than white students. And I, 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 I thought this was a, 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 a bad way to represent the content of this book. A okay. And I would add on top of that, um, it, it, besides it, that like representation of this book being kind of not good, also it kind of feeds into the narrative of like critical race theory and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I mean, right now, Florida is dealing with like this, like DeSantis banning this AP African American history class. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that like, it's really important that we kind of push back against that kind of stuff and like, n and try not to feed in to those narratives uh, as much as possible. Okay. I agree. But I think that part of that is going to be not defending really cringy stuff like this book. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I mean, do you have the book open? Yeah. Okay, and what uh, what do, what do you hate about it right now? Uh, well, can you give me like two minutes to read through, and I can start. We can start going through things. Yeah, yeah for you sure. gonna read a book in two minutes, little bro? Oh God, Latinx. It's right here. Great. Okay, sorry. Okay, we're good. Hold on. I also I hate the I hate the treadmill of terms. Like, it's not enough to be not racist. You have to be anti-racist. Like, in twenty years, well, is it gonna be like? It's not enough to be just an anti-racist you've got to be like an equality promoter and then is it you can't be enough to be an equality promoter you've got to be an equality non-negotiator <laughs> like it's so f***ing cringe you've got to be well, anti-racist like give me a f sorry well i think i think we should be we should be anti-racist because if, if racism is so um we can get into the specifics like the specific like tenets of critical race theory but um i think like one of the things that is like the, the number one tenet that critical race theory like builds off of is it like race is that 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 racialization of people they the idea that there are these like but these like uh unique 
distinct categories of human beings um, that we can sort into races uh, and that like there's some some like fundamental essence to like a black person that like a white person doesn't have um, and that like as we like try to break away from this this idea like I mean that process is anti-racism like whether or not it sounds cringe like okay. I, I so, think that's a, a sure, good thing I, to advocate I just for. call it like we can just call it not being racist that's fine that can be part of not being but, racist we don't have to have like a new term every time we find like another way to remove a, a rib term. to like suck ourselves off it is it is a new term and anti saying anti-racist that's a new term um i, I don't know it, it it might be i i don't i don't i don't think it is i i, I suspect that like it, it kind of um wait have you i suspect you... that it was used in well, hold go on. Ahead. how old are you uh, i'm 30 Okay, I'm 34. You never heard the term anti-racist mm -hmm. growing up. I never heard that term growing up. No, of course not. Okay, but but I also I didn't hear. I, I I mean that that I mean arguably that's part of my point in this whole conversation is that I I didn't a lot of these things I didn't learn about growing up. Uh, well, that's, like I, I because well, some of these are probably fairly new, right? Isn't that kind of the point? Um, I well I don't know. Like critical race theory like originated in like the 70s. Sure, but in terms of like getting down, being distilled down to the level where it's starting to be something relevant to uh, um. Grade school educators. Yeah, it apparently took like 50 years. Yeah, so it's that's what I want to say relatively <laughs> new, right? In terms of it getting to this okay. level, right? Okay, so here's like some, so already, okay, so I'm on page 10. These are kind of weird things. So, okay, so let me, I'll give credit first, okay? Design a culturally mm -hmm. sustaining math space. Use culturally relevant um, anti-racist pedagogy practices and curriculum, okay. Cultivate mathematical identity so that everyone can see themselves as mathematicians. That's really good. Design homework policies that are responsive to the lives of students of color in order to support their learning needs. That's a little bit weird. I don't know what the fuck race has to do with that, but okay. Recognize and name the mathematical strengths of students of color and teach them to recognize these strengths in themselves and others. Um, I guess if you're talking about just like saying there are good black people that are good at math too, maybe. And then well, intentionally... Well, I th what? Go ahead. And then Sorry, intentionally no, integrate physical movement in math classes. That yeah, sounds that's fine. the one, right? Nope, that sounds perfectly fine. Well, but I think that, it, I, I don't know if there was another part, um, but I, I feel like that was the bullet point that kind of set off the the way that you you characterize this book a few a few different times. So Correct. I think the first time you read this book, you, you didn't like that, yeah. Well, no, 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 hold on. We'll get to okay. that because it's in here. My problem, and I think okay. I told you this in person, integrating physical yeah. movement to math is fine. But when you say we need to integrate physical movement into math because that's how black people learn math, that's insane. One of those statements I, is perfectly fine. The other one is f crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like some shit over here, Fuentes. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I kind of agree. I don't think it says that specifically. Um, okay. But I guess we can run through the, the the three of these that you said. Like the first one you said was kind of weird. Was designing homework policies that are responsive to the lives of students of color in order to support their learning needs. So would you agree that uh, black people in the U.S. Uh, on average perform uh, lower in mathematic in like math classrooms? Yes. Like perform worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like, what are wh how do how do we improve that? My guess is there's going to be a lot of socioeconomic conditions that are hampering a student's ability to learn. So coming from a single so how, parent household, what, what, yeah, I I agree with all that, of, of course. Uh -huh. how, how how does a math teacher, uh, like a one like a specific math teacher who's teach who has like a, a class full of like mostly black students or even a few black students, uh, like how how would they or even just a few students of color, like how would they how would they engage with this? The exact they, same way they engage with a classroom like full, mind. yeah. The exact same way they engage with a classroom full of very poor white students. Do, do you think that this is like the like kind of a, 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 a the what's critiqued is like the liberal colorblindness approach? I, I think it's better than the progressive race realism approach. <laughs> well, well, actually, you know, that, that term, it's, it's kind of funny that that term actually is, is co-opted from critical race theorists. And what it meant in that what, what, what critical race theorists use the term race realist, they're actually referring to the permanence of racism uh, and, and like how it materially impacts people like being uh, like the, the history of racism and the continued like racialization of people uh, and how it perpetuates a lot of these structures that like lead to these disparities. Uh, including in healthcare, but of course, like education in this context. That's totally fine. But at the end of the day, I think that a white kid and a black kid are still going to learn math similarly coming from similar backgrounds. You would treat the kid based on the background, not on the race of the kid. Um, well, well, I, I would argue that in some ways, like the race is, is the background. Um, Can you give me an example uh, of that? Well, when I say that, I, I mean that like, like, someone's race is is not like an immutable characteristic right sure but when you when you say that what i'm thinking in my mind is the scene in the wire where um 
Wallace is teaching his little brother math and he's and he and the kid can't do like a bus picks up four kids, it drops off two kids, it picks up five kids. And he said, Okay, well let's say that you're running the spot and a crack dealer buys ten dollars worth of crack, he drops twelve, blah blah blah. And he's like, Oh, okay, I can do that. And he's like, How the f keep the count right? That's what I'm thinking of when you say black math. So you give me a better example so because I, I aside didn't say from like drug math. dealing, well no, but aside <laughs> from drug dealing, I don't know what the f talking about when you say that like well how do black kids have to learn math a little bit differently than white kids like give me an example of that because other than like some crazy um, show like that i can't think of what somebody could possibly be saying well what what, what, what about uh well i think i think the idea might be like um kind of encouraging the kids to try to relate it to their own lives uh regardless of what like that example like selling is, crack? is a little cartoonish I, that's what i'm asking I, I mean, like what is no, different between so. the black person's life and the white person's I, I'm not, life i'm not saying there's going to be any Okay, I, I'm not yeah. saying there's going to be any one thing that's like never going to apply to a white kid that will like that's more like or that's only going to apply to a black kid, right? I'm not saying that, but I am saying that there might, and I don't know what the specifics are here, but there might be things that that could be more be more likely to apply to a black kid. Maybe okay, I mean, but like, is it a little um, bit weird that like we can't even think of a single thing? Just one, just one example of like what. Like what? Like I'm trying to think uh, of like because because I, I, I like I've tutored kids before. I did that for a little bit. I taught my son with yeah, the homework yeah, and shit. Me too. I don't That's know. Like decade of my life. I don't think I would ever think, like it. That sounds cartoonish. Where a kid is like having trouble, and I'm like, and he's like, oh, like I, multiplication. So I was like, no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> hold on, my little ninja. Okay, imagine Kobe Bryant shoots 21 three pointers in a row. What's the score? And he's like, oh, 63. And it's like, ah, there you go, dude. See, we got, we're all good at math. Like that's what I'm envisioning in my head. I don't know what I don't know what you're talking sure. about in terms of like what is your what is your go-to example for like a black example versus a white kid example. I don't know what that means. Well, I, I guess that's why I'm saying I I don't know that I would contrast those like so so harshly. Um, but it, like rather we it might like it says responsive to the lives of the students of color, right? So like it, it might be like it might be uh, the the best solution is actually engaging with that student that is falling behind uh, a student of color in this case, particularly, and trying to find what experiences in their life might relate. I mean, I've had I've had students that um, uh, I had a black student once who who I was like when I would talk about like money uh, more, it was easier for him to con conceptualize like fractions and stuff. Uh, when I wish sure, I but do you see that like you're stuff. doing? I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying again. Uh -huh. I'm not saying that like white kids would yeah. also not benefit. No, no, you're from, doing. You know, you're you're giving me the liberal answer. Like I would engage with him as an individual, but that's not my issue. If you're telling me you would engage with an individual and find out things, that's fine. But my issue is when you stereotype it to like, well, different races of kids might like engage with math in different ways, which is what this seems to be saying. Um, well, there might uh, again. I'm I'm not like. I, I do want to be clear that I like this. A lot of the stuff I, I've I've read, I've learned a lot about this in the past couple of years, but I'm not like I, I'm not like, you know, I, I didn't go to school for any of this stuff. Like I obviously computer science, hence the radical coder thing. Um, so like I, I didn't like I, I didn't take any. Uh, yeah, I didn't learn any of this stuff formally. OK, um, so I, I do want to be clear about that. But like I think um, I think what's being said here is that like the it, it's not saying that there are specific strategies that you only apply to students of color but that they might be like students of color might be more likely to need these strategies approach or to like to, to uh yeah to, to like might benefit more from these strategies being implemented than like white students on sure average. but then it just sounds like you should just be responsive to the like the needs of your students i mean like you could say that but uh, but we didn't I, say again, that I we're think... implying that students of color have a unique set of needs I don't. I don't think. Well, I mean, they do. What are on, they on average? Um, well, they. 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 I mean, like, they're. I don't. Whatever. The, whatever it is that's making them perform worse, right? Is it their like genes? Those, those... What? I, you gotta no, tell me what, you're talking, what are we talking no. about? But what are we talking about? I'm so. If this was Fuentes, I would be accusing you of dog whistling right now. So I'm trying to figure I out know. what. I'm trying to figure out what the f you're talking about. What does it mean? Like, if I was. If I was tasked with like. And this is, especially as I've spent, I spent a lot of time arguing with racists. I'm not saying you're racist. Mm -hmm. And then I spent a lot of time arguing with, um, with red pillars, right? If people yeah. wanna talk about men and women, now I think there's more in similar than there is in difference, but dealing with the differences in men and women have made me erase like a lot of the racial sh that I saw. Because like men and women are distinctly separate creatures. And we, we, there are different things that we hardcore treat in different ways. And I can see those differences. But if you spend a lot of time around a lot of different people, I, like, I don't think I would teach a black kid or a white kid math differently. I, so, so I'm just trying to, I don't know what the f means. Design homework uh, policies that are responsive I, to the lives of students of color in order to support their learning needs. 
Like, can, yeah, like so for instance, what, I think I, what I interpret mm-hmm. from that is that students of color are going to be disproportionately beneficial or are going to disproportionately benefit from from engaging with like homework policies that are responsive to their lives specifically. To their lives specifically, that's an individual thing, or unless you mean like the lives of a. It, it like is. Student. It, it is individual, but but like I, I mean, there might again. I I don't I don't know what like some specific examples are. It's not like, okay. but like I, I mean, the U.S. is still largely segregated, right? Like we still have um like like black people are largely condensed in, in certain areas. Yep. And a lot of there's a lot of a lot of things that perpetuate that as well with like the um, uh, the way that housing uh uh. That, uh, yeah, the way that like low income housing is built and stuff, it, it, that's a whole different conversation. Um, but like, so these things exist, right? So there are going to be like experiences in mm-hmm. those communities that are going to be more prominent than outside of those communities, right? I, sure. But like, tell me that this doesn't sound like something that like would come out of like an American first textbook, like a Nick Fuentes textbook, right? Center, so. no, ethno, I, I, center ethnomathematics. Yeah. Recognize the ways that communities of color engage in mathematics and problem solving in their everyday lives. For instance, calculating your mother's credit card rate, figuring out how much your dad owes on a payday loan. Like, what's the difference between an eighth of weed versus two gram? Like, what does that mean? You, you, wait, wait, so th- those examples, they're, they're not in this book, right? The, the no, 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 just, but I'm saying like, that's, yeah, no. What, what are the examples? That's why I'm asking for an example. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, like, what are we talking about? Um, I, I don't know, but I bet I bet that uh, like well, I mean, let's let's try to figure it out. Maybe this does. Uh, let's see. Teaching mathematics can help solve problems affecting students' communities. Model the use of math as a solution to their immediate problems, needs, and desires. So again, it's it's about. Um, wait, hang on. Uh, I, you, you're gonna hate this, this this third one. Identify and challenge the ways that math is used to uphold capitalist, imperialist, and racist views. <laughs> I was honestly, I read ahead and I saw, I wasn't even going to address the one. That's clearly fucking yeah. ridiculous. I don't know why that's in a, it has anything to do with, t- yes. That math? Uh, I, I mean, you don't, you don't think there's any way it could? I mean, anything could be used for anything, but math, are, math is numbers. I think mean, that's more appropriate in like a sociology, like an econ class. We could talk about how different economic structures might uphold um, forms of racism or how people could, whatever, but in a math, for math curriculum? I think I think the um, the the next one kind of plays into this uh, that like teaching the value of math is both an abstract concept and as well as an, an, a useful everyday tool. I think a lot of framing of math is, is is like math education is just that like we're learning these abstract um, like very hard, hard and fast rules uh, and that it like like math is viewed as a very very rigid uh, a, 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 like educational program mm-hmm. um, like that it's 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 like set in stone that like th- there's only like one. Or, or like very very specific and particular ways to learn math, but I, I think that like there's there's a lot of fluidity and like I think I, I view math as a creative field, um, and I, I think that that it, like in, like kind of leaning into that is is part of this. Um, okay, well we'll go. I mean we can read through. I'm sure there's a lot of examples in here, so. I hope so. There should be. I mean, I, I, if there's not, then that that would be my critique is that it needs it needs more examples about these specific like points. Um, uh, but I think I think a lot of these come from a lot of this stuff comes from um, uh, it, it's all uh, it's all centered around the uh, uh, how to be the how to be an anti-racist or something or no, no, not not that one It's dismantling racism. Uh, uh, Jones and Oaken um, in their dismantling racism workbook, which might be a, a separate conversation. Um, but yeah, we can keep moving. OK. What's what's uh one of the next bullet points that I sorry I kind of well, lost. Well, I'm just uh, yeah, I'm just I'm reading through, I'm reading through until I come up with the next yeah. thing that. You're good. <laughs> so, I mean, like it's there's not it's not, mm-hmm. but like teach students of color about their mathematical legacy and ancestral connection and well, mastery. Ma- I mean, like yeah, that's the one I brought up earlier. <laughs> but I, well, I mean, I, I mean, I think um. Uh, the, the last bullet point in that section kind of apply, uh, explains like why that's important, like giving rightful credit to the discovery of math concepts by mathematicians of color. Like uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of Probably. Uh, like math history that's been kind of whitewashed, right? Um, yeah, there might have been, yeah, but okay, just scrolling through. And, and that's something worth exploring, especially like I mean, uh, I think one of the things that's mentioned in here somewhere is um like the the Pythagorean theorem that's like specifically like the exi- was used before Pythagoras. Um, but like we still like kind of name it after him. 
That's true um, of a lot of stuff in math, by the way. Sometimes people discover sure. things and it's not formally um, like attributed to a mathematician or a physicist until later when they figure out a different application where like that happens a lot. But Yeah, I agree. But I, I think there, there's probably a disproportionate uh, framing uh, in terms of like the, the racialized uh, uh, ideas of these things, right? Uh, like who, yeah, who could be true. That's possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, reclaim concepts attributed to white mathematicians that should be attributed to mathematicians of color. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I wish, again, I, I, my biggest critique of this book w would probably be that the lack of examples with some of these things. Well, no, no, no. Um, I think there, there are examples. We're just going to scroll down. Fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I haven't read through this whole thing yeah. before, so this might be a lot of fun, okay? Yeah. Who are yeah. my students? Students are tracked, engage. White supremacy culture shows up in math classrooms when dot, 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 students mm -hmm. are tracked. Too often, students are tracked based on the notion that adults know what the right thing is for them, which does not allow room for student agency, reinforcing paternalism and power hoarding. Often, placement mm -hmm. into different tracks reflect subjective metrics of innate ability without acknowledging prior opportunities or experiences. Following the same vein, leadership often decides which teacher is right for which course without allowing input from the teachers, students, or parents. Instead, provide students with opportunities to give feedback to teachers about the classroom and instruction. A verbal example, fist to five. How well do you understand what we talked about today? Fist to five, how well did I teach this today? Classroom activity, exit tickets or surveys that ask students to identify how well teachers taught, what helped them learn, what got in the way of their learning, etc. Professional development, conduct regular surveys and disaggregate data on teacher practices. Um, three examples I thought mm -hmm. were fine. The, this p paragraph is a little cringy. The students are tracking, but consider our students are tracked even within your own classroom, professional development, identify ways of tracking inside the classroom, seating charts, pairing slash groupings, etc. and conduct walkthroughs to assess the extent which tracking is occurring and offer alternatives. I don't know what that means. Professional development and the ways that tracking can have a negative impact on student identity and mathematical achievement. Um, professional development. Challenge the notion that if a student did not pass one course, that they will not be successful in the next course. See math is taught in a linear fashion and skills are taught sequentially without consideration of prerequisite knowledge. I don't know what so that actually, I, means we, in math. Yeah. We talked about this one. I, I, have an, I actually know an example for this one. Okay. Uh, and I think it's mentioned somewhere later in the book. Okay. Um, but uh, they talk about the the idea that uh, like like the idea of matrices. Matrices are are not taught until like um, I think it's like pre calculus is like the first time that they even engage with matrices because they're viewed as like a, a high level math concept. But like to to in, to engage with matrices and to, like understand how to work with matrices, all, all you really need is like really like basic arithmetic. Um, and so there's probably there's probably a lot more examples of like a, a lot of these concepts that like in the way that they're taught in those higher level math classes might be dependent on on lower level math classes and things learned in those. But uh, there's well, a sure, lot of different ways to approach these things that aren't aren't completely dependent. Yeah. Um, th okay. That's true. But that's a yeah. that's a pretty niche example. Like for advanced manipulation of matrices, that's just going to depend on what type of manipulation you're trying to do is what prerequisite of math you're going to need, right? Uh, so, well, yeah. like, if you just want to add two matrices together, um, then you all technically you only need addition, right? But I mean, like, yeah, I feel yeah. like in a way that statement is a bit reductive because, like, technically all of calculus is just it's a lot of addition and subtraction, kind of, <laughs> right? Because all, well, mul all well, multiplication yeah, I, is a lot of addition and division is kind of like subtraction and like. Uh, but I mean, that's a bit reductive. Well, well I, I would agree with that. I, I mean, I would say on that on that note, like there's probably concepts in calculus that could be introdu introduced at a much earlier level, like without um, without like completely. I mean, they're you're not they're not going to be like cohesive. Sure, like, but this is like such a but them, sure. But. OK, sure. But this is a very silly, like irrelevant point. Right. Broadly speaking, Why? a student is going to need to know addition and subtraction probably before they can learn multiplication and division. Right. Uh, yeah, of course. Because broadly are, speaking, a up, student yeah. is going to need to know your basic arithmetic in order to move on to algebra, right? Yeah, well, but but I don't think that. Um, I, I broadly think that speaking, the, you're going to probably need to know algebra before you move on to like calculus or pre-calculus. I, I learned. I learned. I had, to, I had to go through algebra before geometry. I, I don't know if I. I, don't, I think that there's probably ways that those can be taught that are are, are a little bit more malleable. Um. 
you might be able to teach geometry without algebra, but oof, that seems pretty rough. Like it wouldn't be this it, like you wouldn't be able to teach like a full geometry course as they exist today without algebra of course but you can introduce a lot of geometry without without knowing uh, like all of algebra well when, well all of algebra i mean technically i mean you learn algebra linear algebra there's like some of the most advanced math classes are quote unquote algebra but like yeah. like the concept of the concept of like um adding up corners or or shit on like a rectangle or a square is technically algebraic right like yeah. for, like for, like the um, the perimeter of a rectangle is a um, is two a plus two b or whatever right like the, technically they're so algebraic on, right on that example like if you did if you didn't pass an algebra class and I'm not I'm not saying like people should be like advanced to the next especially not as they, as they exist today and I don't, I don't know if this is what it's saying either I think it's talking about like disaggregating these things so like. Um, the idea of that, that specific example where you're adding up all those angles and there's like one missing value. If you understand that concept, if you understand like the find X concept, you don't understand everything. You might not understand everything that like you learned in algebra, but if you understand that find X, then you've just, you've just added like an entire. Yeah, uh, but if you don't, if you can't comprehend like variables, um, that's what well, we call this, them, right? Like context, X or whatever. We, like if you can comprehend variables, you're, you're going to fail the fuck out of geometry. You're not going to make it <laughs> like, well, well, I mean, in the example I was just describing, it was it had it, it was specifically referring to like an understanding of at least like a very basic idea of a variable. Sure. So, like, if you haven't done any algebra, you're not doing geometry, in any meaningful. Yeah, no, I'm manner, not saying right? I'm not saying that. Well, well, I mean, you no, know, you're not you're not doing a a holistic geometry class. You're not but doing you could any do a geometry. lot of geometry. Really? Like what? Uh, I I mean, even even like knowing like the di the different like angles and being able to um. Like like knowing that a triangle like like uh like knowing that all like all uh that all the angles add up to one eighty you don't have to necessarily know how to find all of these, um, like in that like every time that you engage with it. Um, you kind but of I, could, I, but I like these are going to be you could teach these, but oh my god, this is going to be cancer without having any concept of algebra in your head. Because algebra is what, like, like, well, how do you figure but, out? But we're not, we're not talking about having no concept of algebra. We're talking about not having a complete, like, we're, we're talking about not having a complete understanding of algebra. Well, nobody says, having, you like, have, but this is, you're arguing a straw man. Nobody's saying you have to master okay. algebra before you do any geometry. But typically, mathematical concepts build off of each other. They absolutely do. Yeah, I agree. Well, then if you agree, then you fundamentally, then math needs to be taught probably in a relatively linear fashion. You probably you need to learn Relatively addition linear. and yeah, yeah re, which every no mathematician would disagree with that. Any mathematician would say, yeah, you well, could probably learn a bit like a bit of geometry before a bit of um, before a bit of am, dude. F me, it's been so long. Like technically, trigonometry <laughs> is just like really advanced geometry, right? Yeah, yeah. When when you start doing like trig and Sokotoa and all that shit, that's that's geometry. It's just more advanced, right? But you, I don't think you can do trigonometry without knowing geometry, right? You're definitely not doing um, probably, trigonometry without well, algebra. Actually, right? actually, um, I, I I have some students currently who are who uh, have have definitely not taken uh, like like a higher level geometry class or any of this stuff. Like they're they're too young for that. But they 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 have a basic understanding of like sine waves and cosine waves. No, hold they, on. They, no, 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 stop. Don't say basic understanding. No, no. When I say when I say when I, when I say that, I mean that they, like they they use them in like computer programming, like to make like to make waves, like to literally draw waves, and they understand how to how to change the the form of these waves. Um, they don't understand the math behind it, but they understand how to use them. Then they don't understand if they don't know any of the math. They, then they just... understand. They understand that changing values changes the way the waves look, and that's yeah. That's but if you don't huge. understand the underlying theory, you're guessing. Right? If you don't know the difference between like what is the amplitude, what is the frequency, what what's it, where does the sine start versus the cosine start on like the part of the wave, you're just guessing. They can punch numbers into a computer and see how it looks a little bit different coming out. But if you're doing computer science, you're trying to spit out like a precise wave that's like measuring, giving you some information. You got to know the math. You have there's there's no shortcut for that. Or you don't understand what you're doing. Well, I I agree with that. If you're trying to get like very very specific answers, no, but any I think what answer. I'm proposing is <laughs> Anybody, what, what I'm what I'm proposing. What I'm proposing is just being able to even engage with some of these concepts and and in like ways that are are, are less uh, like less like different than the traditional ways of, of introducing these concepts, um, like understanding, like showing it in like a program that like e even like a, a, an elementary school student can can write that you can change what a wave looks like and how how high it goes up or whatever just by changing a couple of numbers. Like I, I think that's that's a pretty big concept that normally people don't get introduced to until like their junior year of high school or at least maybe sophomore year now uh, okay like i think that you can nibble at the edges like i could probably explain like 
concepts in Calc 2 to Nathan, who is doing like just getting into algebra, there are probably some things I could broadly explain to him, but like he's not gonna have any actual understanding. I'm not gonna say like, oh yeah, my kid, you know, he kind of knows Calc 2 a little bit. He he's probably, not, he's he, exactly he would get like a three a on the BC exam, right? Like, no, but, but <laughs> I mean, like you can nibble around the edges. Like there's a few things that I understand from like quantum mechanics and shit, but I wouldn't say that like, oh, I have a thorough understanding or I even have an elementary understanding of QM. I would say like, I've read a few passages. I know like a couple of concepts barely, but I don't have like a working knowledge or good understanding of any of it. I, I just, I just like sure. math, math, I'm going to fight harder. Like math has to be taught okay. in a relatively linear fashion. If you want to make this really weird argument that, well, you can nibble around the edges of some parts of math without having a bunch of prerequisites and shit, then sure. But to fully flesh out and understand the concepts, these are going to have to be taught in a relatively linear fashion, I think. So I, 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 I agree that there's some linear, linear uh, form that needs to be taken here. But I think, I think what I'm challenging is, is the way that these are section, the way that these uh, categories are sectioned off and like all of the pieces that are grouped in in these different in these different levels of math and and trying to trying to break those up so we're looking more at the specific at the like most specific prerequisites like what are the what are the smallest pieces you need to learn to engage with like a specific topic and then like what sure. can you do with that i know but like let's going back to the book if a student fails math in 4th grade they probably are going to fail math in 5th grade <laughs> right uh probably like yeah so I don't think I would challenge the notion that if a student didn't pass one course, they'll not be successful in the next course. Chances are, if you failed math in fourth grade, you're going to need tutoring or help because you're not going to have a good time in fifth grade. Well, I don't. I don't think that anyone writing this would add, would say that like that student shouldn't have tutoring or help. I feel like that they would say that that student could do better the next year with tutoring and help. Okay, I don't. I don't think. I think this is disagreeing with that, but. Because this okay. is saying C math is taught in a linear fashion and skills are taught sequentially without consideration of prerequisite knowledge. I don't know how you teach any math class past um, year three. I don't know how you teach any of that math without considering prerequisite knowledge. Well, I, I actually, I, I think this what this might be pointing out um, is is that uh, w like when kids move up through math. Um, when kids move up through math classes, even if they, I, I think this is kind of actually maybe uh kind of not the opposite point but like uh, the other side of what we were like what i was talking about uh, the, a moment ago um because i think it, i think it might be pointing out that like um y when we move up into the next class you're expect you're you're very much expected to have uh, uh all of the fundamentals from that last class but you might only have like some of those fundamentals um i feel so, like, like i feel like you what, need that like like you need like well, you, you the, like there are teachers that will reteach, but it's a waste of time. Like I I, I have very limited college well, experience. That's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, I wish I, I I passed. I was done with all math before I got to college because I wanted a music degree, mm -hmm. and you only needed like fucking algebra or something, or maybe calc one. I don't even think it was that. Um, but the um, when I got to even on my music classes, one of the most frustrating things for the teacher and and music in a lot of ways for the theory mm -hmm. is probably is pretty related to like philosophy or math, right? And then it builds off of yeah. each other. And one of the frustrating things for a teacher when you start to teach a class, and I bet this happens, I bet this happens in every single college course. As soon as you show up, the teacher's like, "All right, guys." Today, we're gonna learn how to do uh, integration, you know? And we're gonna do this and that and that. And somebody, and like, maybe like four kids raise their hand and they're like, what does the D over DX thing mean? What is that? And the teacher's like, what do you mean? It's like, well, I don't know what that symbol is. What is the weird line thing? And, the, and then the teacher's like, Jesus, fuck, you didn't learn this stuff? Okay, well, hold on, we gotta go back and we've gotta, do you know what this means? Do you know what this symbol means? Have you ever seen a parenthesis before? Do you know what the fuck this is, right? Like, if people don't, if they haven't seen the, like, the fundamental basic things, then the teacher has to play a bunch of catch up because you kind of do need this knowledge, right? And to have to reteach everything over and over and over again is really fucking frustrating, I think. That, that's, I, this probably happens in yeah. like, every single class in college, like. Yeah, I bet it does. Um, I guess, I guess my, what I what I would advocate is is trying to trying to set up better um, trying to find like better explanations for because that that probably is such a common experience like you're saying so like if we if we could find uh, like more intuitive explanations of a lot of these things that we can share with those teachers uh, that they can then use in their classrooms I think that would that would probably help a lot with this problem right like like because you can explain like the basic concept of like and an, like there are probably examples that you can you could apply integrals to um, like uh, without 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 like explicitly saying like oh it's it's an infinite number of tiny tiny rectangles uh, under this curve but you can say like oh it is measuring the the, the how much um, 
how much of the, the area under this curve because they probably they probably understand the concept of an area, right? Um, uh, like the area of a surface. Uh, well, hopefully, and, and, I mean, to understand an area, you're going to need to know a little bit of geometry, and to understand area and geometry, you're going to need to know a little bit of algebra. <laughs> and to know algebra seems pretty linear to me, well, but. <laughs> Well, understand area. All you really need is like multiplication, right? For most, for most, uh, for like basic area. To understand, so, understand area, like you're like, going like, to need multiplication and, and algebra and geometry for area, right? What length times uh, width is depend- a formula. The formula is algebraic, yeah. and you're going to need to know multiplication to do the algebra, right? It's probably a concept. Well, right? it's, it's algebraic, but but like I mean, you you learn how to find like the area of a, of a square like before you take an algebra class. Not just a square, but like rectangles and, and triangles, and you learn these formulas, and they are algebraic formulas. But like that doesn't mean that you like you learn them in algebra. You usually learn these in elementary school, I think. Yeah, but it's part. It's you're. It's starting to. That's it's out. Al, that's algebraic, right? Uh, I, I would call it algebraic, but you don't introduce it in algebra class, and that's kind of like. I, the I, whole I thing mean, like, okay, you say in algebra class, like technically, calc one, calc two, calc three, differential equations are all like algebra classes. I mean, like depending on how you view it, it's all algebra, right? But I mean, like when you're learning uh, formulas, where you've got okay, I might be retarded. Hold on, I totally admit. Okay, when you have like a letter and the letter stands for the number, broadly speaking, that's algebra, isn't it? Or my. I might be dumb. And then obviously it refers uh, to a lot of concepts you, you learn within the manipulation of variables. <laughs> but broadly speaking, as soon as the letters show up, you're kind of, it's algebra, right? Uh, g- yeah, generally. But okay. like, but so for I, formulas, I guess what I'm saying. Right? Uh, yeah. The fucking like pi, like three fourths pi r cubed and all this shit, like area of a sphere and all that bullshit. We learning all of those things. When you got the letters in there, that makes it algebra, doesn't it? Well, well, if so, then you're saying that the students are learning algebra what, like well before algebra class, which which yeah, I kind you're of learning, agree if you're with. Do, well, no, because before you probably need to know algebra to really start to tackle geometry. Like I think when we say I think this phrase "no algebra" and like saying we know algebra, we know geometry, it, it's it's like saying like. Um, it, it, we're talking about like if you can, it, like it's like knowing a, an entire programming language. You don't no, have to know the entire language. No, to build nobody, stuff with it. no, like, nobody says that. Nobody means that. If somebody course. asks you, like, we want to learn this language, like, do you know, do you know, like, C? And someone's like, oh yeah, I know C. And they're like, oh really? Write every single library. Nobody says that, right? No, that's not what anybody means. No. You know what I mean when I no, say this, you, right? If, like. Yeah, but but if you if you have some basic familiarity with the syntax and like the keywords in C, then you can and you and some underlying concepts, then you can probably like do a lot of stuff with C and a lot of sure, other languages. Sure, exactly, and it's gonna be the same thing with like algebra and geometry, right? You probably need to know a bit of algebra to really have an understanding of geometry, yes. right? I, I I think that we're talking past each other a little bit here. Well, okay, cause, well, it seems like you're taking like comical understanding of what I'm saying. Like, you, you need to know Maybe. algebra, like in order to learn geometry destiny. Are you saying that a person needs to do like discrete, like fucking finite, like linear algebra, like all these classes in order to even start learning what a square is? And I was like, well, obviously not. But like, you have to know what variables are and you got to know that you can like change variables and like add and subtract them and how to work with a variable in a statement, right? Because b- before you get into variables, you're like, you're solving everything. Everything can be resolved to a number, right? Four times five is 20. 20, right? And if I'm going to move these numbers around, I can always like, I can resolve everything down to a single figure. But when algebra, when letters become involved, well, 4L, you know, equals, you know, 2W or some shit like, well, now I've got like variables that are going to like throw around and shit, right? Like it gets, I think it's, but. Okay. Well, I, I think there's a difference between saying like, cause we're talking about algebra is like when the letters come in, I think there's a difference between like a plug and play, like where you're like replacing variables in a formula with values and whether, and when you're like actually using algebra to manip, to maneuver, like manipulate that, that formula, like dividing by numbers, or like you, like, uh, like using the equal symbol and like between two values and like dividing and multiplying and like exchanging between these two sides of the equation and like balancing the equation and stuff like this. Like that's, that's more the algebraic in my mind that's that's like really what you're learning in algebra is like is is this part and uh and and you don't necessarily need that to like calculate like width and height and learn area like we were talking about earlier okay um all right i'll move on to the next part sure (laughs) i think you have to move relatively near but we're gonna back yeah okay which part i'm sorry which part are you looking at right now oh i'm just reading i'm on page 21 right now just going down saying if i see anything highly problematic Somebody in chat said something. Can we that, look at. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, go I was going to say, somebody in chat said something that was more or less the same thing I think I said to you in person. Mm-hmm. Somebody said, um, 
I read ahead through this document. It's essentially a quirkier syllabus structure with a nicer grading system. It's funny, I think this exact report could be written without any reference to race because none of the actual classroom prescriptions are grades related. I think that was the thing I said to you, that some of the things that we're listening to here actually sound like pretty good ideas. I think, okay, I just don't know why they have anything related to race. They could all be written without referencing race and it would be like perfectly fine. Well, if, if, if this book is specifically written with the goal of like reducing like the racial education gap in, in like mathematics, then like, like how, how can they do that without talking about race? Because I don't think that we have a racial gap in learning because of people's races. I think it probably has to do with like socioeconomic conditions or maybe we just teach math in a pretty but, shitty way, but I don't think we have to teach math race, differently to black people and white people. But race is, I, I would argue race is a socioeconomic like, like construct, like it, it like the, the impact of race on people is because of socioeconomic or it, it like emerge, emer manifest through socioeconomics. Like, 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 like that's okay. kind of like, Ra the whole okay, thing. well, let's deconstruct some of these sentences. Okay. Mm -hmm. Race is a socioeconomic construct. So void of socioeconomics, race is probably still going to be a thing. Black people will be black people. White people will be white people. So if anything, these, these are two concepts that engage with each other, but race doesn't arise from socioeconomics, I don't think. I don't. I don't know if. Um, it, I mean, we don't have like an alternate world without like the history of racialization, right? But well, I, I, can I don't do know this if, world if, right now. A black immigrant coming from Kenya is going to be richer than ninety five percent of the, of white Americans, right? Race well, doesn't arise from socioeconomic constructs, right? Well, well, no, but but the impact of race in, on on on. I mean, it, we wouldn't say that like that person has the same impact uh, impact of race as as someone as like an African American, right? Sure, um, I agree with you. They they that's why I said they intersect with each other. So racial identities fact, might the, intersect with socioeconomic identities, right? Or influence. What I'm saying is that the fact that both of these people are considered black, and that black is a category that we would apply to both these people despite their very drastically different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, I, like, I think this is this is the racialization part. I understand that this is, this the, is like, what this, I highly yeah. disagree with. I think it's been a huge okay. misstep for progressives for a long time to look at two black people and assume that any part of their experience is shared. And it's been a frustration with a lot well, of black people. That, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm agreeing right. with you. Oh, OK. I, well, then, saying, then the I'm race saying, part I'm is saying, separate from the socioeconomic part. Let's talk about that when it comes to education. Um, I'm OK. So there's, there's I guess there's two parts uh, uh, to, to that. Like there's there's the there's they do, they are categorized, they're both viewed as black, right? Um, but the fact that they're so, they have these very different backgrounds and they are both categorized, categorized as black uh, is because of the history of like racialization. Like because we, we, we have these two categories of like black or white um, and obviously they're not the only two racial, ra racial categories that we use. Um, but because of the history of these categories, we end up loop lumping these people just based on their like skin color being similar. Well, who's like, lumping but, them but together? That, that, well, hold on. Who's lumping them together? Because right now it's progressives uh, well, that are doing a hardcore. I don't think so. I don't think I don't think this is saying that like an, an immigrant from a rich background is going to have the same experiences as like a, a an African or an African American student here. Here is something I'll say broadly speaking. Okay, I think a I think a black immigrant into the United States is going to have a, a lifestyle that's more similar to a white middle class person than a, an African American any class person. I agree. Okay, so then why talk about why fix it on the racial part here for this particular thing? Seems like when it comes to education, socioeconomic status is probably going to be a really big factor here, a huge factor. Socioeconomics and um, and uh, not geopolitical, geographical, like where you live, like the neighborhoods you live in, which is also going to be tied to your socioeconomics. Seems like that's going to be like the huge determinants here. So, in one of the examples we were talking about, like um, like t teaching about like historic figures of color, um, right? And so, like that that's something that it, how, how do you separate that one from race? Like, would would you just not like say that we should we should like like treat, yeah, should we the, not the way that, that I would separate that from race is that that has nothing to do with the people in your classroom. If you have a classroom full of 45 white students, they should be learning about um, contributions to mathematics that black people have made. That should have nothing to do with the race of your students. If it's a bunch of black students, well, I agree, then, but they're that's not. Cool. Well, like no, 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 on, but I'm just saying, you just asked me not. where would I remove the racial part? The yeah. racial part isn't in the race of the person you're teaching about. That should be universal. We're talking about treating people what we teach to them differently based on their race. I don't think that should be different. I don't well, think it has to do with well, race. I think I, it's like for other things, right? Well, I think that it, um, I, I think it's important. I do think it's important to teach about like historic, like mathematicians of color in, in, in a largely white classroom as well. But I, I, I think that the students, like, like the black students are probably going to 
benefit more from learning about that, like on average, because they, it's better for the, like they are they see less representation in this already. Um, so like uh, like if we're going to make that adjustment, like it, it should be in, it should be in both areas. But um, like it, it it's probably going to make a bigger difference in the in the black classroom. I don't even know if that's true. I, it might be. Maybe it's more important. Maybe the black kids can just look at white kids all day because they're used to it anyway. Maybe it's more important for the white kids to learn that hey, black people can contribute to math too. Like learn about these people. I don't know if that's true or not. It seems like it's probably really important to teach these things to everybody. There's really good reasons for everybody to know these things. I I agree that it's very important, but, but like I don't think that we're going to be able to. I don't I don't think the goal here is to like create a new universal curriculum. I think the goal is to be able to like 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 expand the way that we approach these curricula like in, into more like specific scenarios, um, and, and like it, again like it's going to benefit those white students as as well to like make them like grow up like like with less ra race racist like ide ide ideation, ideations is that ideations, uh -huh. um, but also but also like the, again like I I mean I think it's I think there is uh, uh, and I, I I don't have this on hand of, but I'm pretty sure there is like a lot of data like suggesting that like you know having like black teachers like black students benefit more from like having a, a, like more black teachers uh, like yeah teachers I agree like but that. I also bet that it, I bet that it helps white people too I bet it does if when white if white people can see that like uh, women but can be doctors reasons. or black people can yeah for different reasons but still it's still incredibly helpful. Like we want it, we want everybody to see that everybody can be a thing. Like that's probably really important, right? Because at the end of the day, fuck, yeah. maybe for white people, actually, maybe it might be more important for black people for white people to learn these things. Because we believe that we live in a white supremacist uh, society with white power structures all around us. At the end of the day, the person who's going to be hiring the black mathematician is probably a white guy. It's probably more important that the white guy knows that black people are good at math than the black guy knows that black people are good at math. Because the white guy is going to have to decide if he wants to hire a black guy to teach math to kids, right? Maybe it might be more important for the white people to learn. But this is yeah, what I'm saying. I'm saying it's silly to like try to figure out like which one is more important. Like it's it's really important. I think that everybody in society learns all of these things. I don't think it has to be hyper fixated. Like in the most wealthy suburb in all of America, those kids should be learning that there have been some things that we say white people invented that probably were invented by people of color or you know people around the world before white people found it. That's probably important to learn. Um, yeah, I, I agree that it's important to learn those things. Uh, but but if we're if we're talking about how to um. Like like when we like some of these bullet points are like uh, um, exposed students to mathematicians of color. Like th these are it's it's not. I, I don't know if it's it's just advocating to only do these things in like largely uh, black classrooms, right? Uh, like I, I think that it, it does it it does help those students in a different way than it helps the white students. But like I think I, I agree with you that it's like it's good to do these things in in both. Um, but there might be there might be more emphasis on some of these things uh, in, in a, like a disproportionately black classroom. That might I don't know. Um, okay, I disagree, but all right. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe not. Yeah, but I, I I think I think it's I think it might be uh, uh, there might be something to that. Uh, okay, going down page twenty five. Just reading through some stuff. Oh, this the the word that that culturally culturally responsive lens I think is is maybe the the concept that we're uh, I, again I, I want I want to be clear that I'm I'm still learning like a lot of this stuff like I'm I'm trying I like because I when I see like there, there's like uh, like 17 states I think that have like implemented some form of like critical race theory ban um, and, and so that's why I think it's I, I think it's really important to like try to engage with a lot of this material with like uh, like uh, like I don't know a lot of good faith. Because like I think sure, I understand, but like put this together. you got to understand, okay? I'm more progressive than 95 percent of the world, okay? And I yeah. would I would want my son learning anything from anybody being taught this stuff. I, like I would I would I would be in the boycott room for this. Like I don't want any educator reading this shit teaching my kid because I don't know what kind of weird shit they're gonna be teaching my kid about like black people or how people learn or any of that. They would make me really uncomfortable. Um, but, I, and I'm making a really it's good- not saying that black, it, it doesn't say that black people and white people like fundamentally learn differently. Although although I would argue there might be reasons that they that they might, they might benefit from different curriculum the based values on their, that, based yeah, on their different backgrounds. But the values backgrounds. that I want to impart on my child, my children in the future maybe, right? Is like one of general, like a, a strive for equality. The idea that all of us can exist in a mixing pot kind of culture and system, that all of us have a lot of similarities. Um, this 
hardcore, like everything is white supremacy, uh, black people need to be taught math in a different way. Like, I, like I'm making a really, really good faith effort to understand, and I can, on a very academic level, I can understand it, but like if I'm having trouble being fully bought into this, your average parent is way the f on on this. There is no way. Like the average person is gonna be like completely out to sea trying to interpret. What does it mean? I'm, like I'm trying to imagine, I've been to a few, I haven't been in a couple of years, but I used to go to the student uh, parent teacher things when the parents would ask questions about the curriculum and shit. And I'm trying to imagine somebody raising a hand and being like, what does it mean when it says, um, we shouldn't focus on content without applying a culturally responsive lens or a strategic scaffolding because we might perpetuate white supremacy culture and inequities. What are you guys teaching in math class? Like, can you give me an example of that? I'm trying to imagine a parent, like, ask that question. How would a teacher respond to that? Um, <clears throat> I, I'm not sure. Um, but but I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I don't believe that there's like no good answer to that. Like the people who put this document together, like probably would have a good answer to that. Right. I feel like, like their answer I, would be, I, I it's not my job to educate you, honey. <laughs> well, I think that's, I, I think honestly, like that's, 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 I, I don't know. I, I totally disagree. I think, I think the people who work, who like put, like spend their lives working on the, on like these subjects and like putting this together, I, I think they probably have like really strong backgrounds and all this stuff. I mean, like if you look at the content developers, like we have math content specialists, director of mathematics education, uh, we have PhD students, uh, whatever. Um, like, uh, I, I think that these people put it working on this probably do have good reasons for like using the language they do and like, like probably have like a, a they've spent a, probably a lot of time and they're not, they're not just on Twitter saying like, it's not my job to educate you. Like, I think that's, I, I think that's, uh, I don't know. I, I think it, it really like devalues like the effort that, that people might be putting into this stuff just because you disagree with the framing of it. Mm -hmm. Like some of these things like, okay. So, okay, so like here, this part, okay. Though many educators value conceptual knowledge, we often assess and test skills rather than concepts, solidifying the notion that skills are more important. Too often this occurs because our systems expect math teachers to prepare students for what is more e easily measurable, reinforcing both quantity over quality and sense of urgency. Also, many teachers prefer to teach procedural fluency so students engage with more complex problem solving because they believe that they have to do the basic or computation skills before they can apply the mathematics. That is 100% true. I agree with that a million percent. The best math teachers are gonna be ones that are explaining a mathematical concept way the fuck before they teach you to ca calculate it, okay? Things like, I bring this up a lot for Calc 1 and 2, integration and derivation, you should have an understanding of what you're dealing with way before you ever look at a formula. If a teacher is throwing so, in front of you functions to teach you how to integrate or derive without you understanding what that even means, what is a rate of change, what, it, what does it mean when we say area under the curve, then they have failed you conceptually. I agree with that. There And there are things in this book that I agree with 100%. I just don't know why well, it has the racial wait. framing. Yeah. Well, hang on. So, well, we can come back to that last part of the racial framing, but like for the example you're, you're talking about right now, like down here, it's at the instead section of this page, right? It, it, it has an example of this, like this idea of, of beginning with the conceptual knowledge and then build the skills along the way. And so it has the verbal example of at the end of the unit, we're going to have a, ca a carnival celebration and we determine whether the games are fair using probability. Let's think about some games that we play. Are you likely to win? So like that idea of like, oh, are you likely to win? You're like you're introducing this concept and like having like students might even be able to get the right answer without like fully understanding like how they might have, how they might have uh, reached that answer. And then you can uh, get into like, ex you can actually explain like the calculation portion of it. And you can go in like deeper into the actual, um, yeah, deeper into the calculations and like how the mechanisms of, of those things work. Sure. But like you're still introducing the concept at a high level. So it's, it's yeah, the I opposite agree. of what- and that's of, great, yeah. that's great. I love that, but this is all under the framing of white supremacy culture shows up in math class classrooms when, like procedural fluency over conceptual knowledge, nobody wants that. Even a, even the biggest white supremacist in the world doesn't actually want that. That's a garbage way to learn. That's how you produce students that can get Bs, but not people that wanna be math majors, not people that wanna do it professionally. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think that the, uh, I don't think the problem is that like only white students can learn this way no no it's not in white students i don't now. even know Wait, what this well, is with white supremacy no, let me oh, god let me get it out well let, let me like like i think the because i mean that's the arg the kind of the the thing is that or the, part of the disagreement here is that like um i'm sorry let me mm -hmm. let me get my let me get my shit together i think part of the problem that we're looking at here is that white students are going to be are going to have an easier time overall for 
a lot of, for a lot of reasons that are are historically associated with them being white, but don't re, not intrinsic to them being white. Um, and those they're going to have an easier time engaging with a lot of these things in the way that they're currently taught. I don't um, think. Wait, and, who's going to have an same, easier time? Wait, what do you mean by that? I think I think white students have an easier time, like demonstrably, with mathematics on, on average. Yeah, but I don't think that's because, like, because white people. But worse. I don't think that's because white people do procedural fluency better. It's just because no, they're probably I agree, from well. But they, but exactly because their backgrounds make it easier for them to engage with the way that these things are taught. So it's not that this. Like the, the idea is that these things are taught in a way that would be more harmful. To, to white people as well if they didn't also have the other structures uh, so why don't we average, call this like didn't have the other structures that were benefiting well, why not why not call it like chinese supremacy culture then um why would we call it chinese because those are the f that are killing us on our math tests well they learn they learn math differently don't they so maybe we could we could include wait, what, some no, of those no 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 wait what do you mean no they probably now i could be wrong okay but the from what I've seen and from my third hand knowledge, Asian people learn math the most white supremacist way, which is the most f***ing rote procedural f***ing. You're going to learn every f***ing formula. And I don't go, f you understand this or not, but you better be able to reproduce every f***ing thing flawlessly. Are you saying that Asian people have like special alternative ways of learning math in the United States? Well, no, what, I, what I'm saying is they, that like um, uh, there's there's one specific example of like uh, drawing lines to do multiplication that I think that comes to mind um, and that's like used more in Asian countries. And so that what I'm saying is there are different approaches that these students learn. Wait, hold on, I'm not talking about age. Asian countries, okay? The most Asian no, country no, I, I know I, is San what, Francisco, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about in the United what, States of America. I, I don't think they use the line system. I think they have, they've got very strict cultures. Their parents force them to do well in school and there are incredibly high expectations in 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 asian communities for their kids to do well in math i agree with that but i've never like i had asian um, friends in in high school i and i even went over to to uh, well the last name was tran what is that is that vietnamese maybe they didn't have the special asian math but like i never saw I, them doing like we all shared notes i didn't see anybody doing like math in any special like asian like he's writing like glyphs no, on his fucking paper i'm not saying that like asian people especially not in the u.s are like, like learning in like fundamentally different way but like asian immigrants probably learned some specific some different tools to when they were engaging with math in their like no, where they came no, from no 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 you don't think so you, no, don't, you don't think i know you so. think we teach, no, no. we teach math exactly the same I I don't think China we does. teach it the same. I think that 99% of the reason why a Chinese kid does really well in the United States is because his parents, their culture is one of incredibly high expectation when it comes to academic achievement. That's why. It, what, it's if not another, because, what if another component is the strategies that are, that are used? What if I think some of the, the strategies? I think their strategies are the most white supremacist. I think that's why Asians are called the model immigrant. It's not because they're bringing over like some crazy voodoo shit from Beijing to teach math to their kids. It's because their parents are literally like, I'm going to beat the shit out of you until you get an A plus. And if you get an A, you're not going to talk to your friends for three weeks. And you're going to have a prescription for glasses when you're nine years old. Like that's like the Asian way of going, of, do, of teaching math in, in the United States. Or that's what I've heard from all of my Asian friends. And that seems to be the stereotypes. Now, maybe there's some other shit that I don't know that I, it's just not part of my experience, but that's what I've heard. Like, I think, I seen. think that there are I think that there are a lot of different approaches that are used in different countries to learn math, like in different, in, like that are standards, not not just standards, but like um, like different like algorithmic approaches to to like cal different calculations that are like culturally relevant, like or that are that are like different. Don't, I, don't, I just disagree. I don't. I don't. I don't disagree. Okay. I think you're wrong. I don't think Asian people okay. learn math right. differently yeah. in the United States. I just think they have very right. strict family like things. Like their culture is very 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 strict. Unless you can think of, right. and again. I, I hate to push for examples, but if you can give me like an example, yeah. or you think of like, oh, well, this might be I a mean, way I, that I, an Asian person engage, like they're born with an abacus, <laughs> like their mom has one of their vagina or something like something like that. Like, unless you can think of something like that, I can't think of anything. Well, I mean, I, I did mention the, the line multiplication that I think is, is pretty standard in, no, in so, I don't know which Asian countries, but no, I, know it no, is. I, not, I know that this is. Asian people in the United States are not like first generation immigrants that are destroying us well, in math. I was, math. I, I was specifically like, talking about, I specifically mentioned Asian immigrants who might've learned these things differently when they were initially exposed to them. I'm not talking about like the guy that came over when he was 37 years old and is studying math. I'm talking about like the, chi like the children, the people that are crushing us in fucking schools, these Asian invaders, okay? The people that are crushing us are like second generation or first generation that came over very, 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 very young. They're not bringing over like a secret set of like Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan math skills that are only taught at Shanghai, like in the shadows of the Great Wall of China, okay? They come to the United States, they learn in our courses, they learn using our strategies, they just have very, 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 very strict cultures around making sure their kids excel in school. That's it, there's not different strategies. Or at least I, okay, I've never heard so, of it, but maybe they don't tell, maybe that's like the, the shit they don't tell 
white people. Maybe they have secret ways of doing it. I don't think I don't, I don't think I don't think anyone's hiding it from you. I just I just don't think that I, I don't think either of us have like like read much into like these different strategies. But I think like the fact that we engage with the fact that Common Core has been slowly implemented uh, and to varying degrees of success for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but like the, one of the main focuses of Common Core has been showing different strategies to doing calculations I agree. and showing. Uh, and so, and so I think that a lot of these different strategies are, are have been used in different countries historically. Like, I understand I, what I think you're saying. That, I'm I just saying that, like, I think that a Chinese math household is going to be is going to it's going to be the perfect emblem of white supremacist teaching. They're going to be doing four hours of homework a night. There's going to be no physical activity <laughs> except maybe to walk their ass down the street to their piano class, and there's going to be sleep early. And there's going to be a strict adherence and focus on getting good grades. Like, it's going to be all of the most white supremacist shit. There's not going to be any weird Asian influence. It's going to be the most, from what these texts would call white supremacist stuff, and that's where their success is going to come from. Well, I, I might I might agree with most of that, but I, I, I do think that there's there's a reason that... Um like like the, like uh, a lot of people consider a, a lot of Asian Americans to be uh, to be able to uh, uh, like engage with whiteness or like be a part of like the whiteness construct, even though their skin's not white. Which you remember that that, that like that conversation uh, on that one panel John um, Lewis, yeah. Uh, where. Yeah, yeah, which I, I, I've, I've, I've been, when I watched that, I, I, I got really frustrated because this, this is literally a panel about critical race theory and everyone on the panel lost their fucking minds when someone just like mentioned race in a way that wasn't explicitly tied to skin color. Because, well, because the guy called an Asian guy white. And I feel like when we stop passing, white, white, no. white you know, not even just white passing. But, no, I think he specifically, he corrected himself and said like white passing. And they said, um, <laughs> he said a white yeah, presenting, yeah, like but like at that point, yeah, I think yeah. we are starting to lose the plot. If we're calling a Chinese dude on a panel, white passing or white presenting, I think we need to take a step back and reanalyze what's going on in the well, conversation. Well, maybe we so. don't, maybe what we need to re or maybe we do need to reanalyze, but what we need to reanalyze is what the word white means, right? Like and, and rather than rather than reanalyzing whether or not we should even use the word white and acknowledge the word white and acknowledge the impact of, of like how this word's been used historically. I, or 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 we could just like focus on redoing teaching methods that make sense for like most people and, and, and focus on the stuff that works rather than trying to like re-socialize on a first grade level our entire organization understanding of like how things work in the United States. I think if our, if our goal is to bring everyone up to some degree, then I, I, I might agree. But if our goal is, is focused on reducing, reducing the disparities, then we do have to have I don't know if we're trying right? to reduce the disparities or say that there are different standards, though. That's the problem, right? It might because it sounds to me like in a perfect world, in a perfect world for some of these progressive books, a white student graduating school and being able to like perform proficiently in an English exam would be graded the same as a black student coming out of school and being able to like, you know, write a good rap song. Like that's what it sounds like. It's like, well, this was equitable and in their culture it's valued to do this more and that's why and it's a, it's a more teaching of the theories and not the tests. And that's what it feels like to me. Where it feels like, well, hold on, we should probably have a common set of standards that we expect all students to be able to perform well under, and that's and we need to figure out how to teach people to do that, rather than racialize everything to this level. I think when I think when we're talking, the reason, like in the context of anti-racism, or I, I think our goal is to reduce like racial disparities. Like we have racial disparities not just in education, but in healthcare, um, and and obviously in income, and all, so many different everywhere. You know, like you, and like. Like you, you, I know you understand this. So, like, it, but if our goal is to try, if one of our goals is to try to reduce these disparities, again, I, I think we we have to talk about race. We have to talk about like why these disparities exist and and have strategies to try to remove them. Try to like try to, uh, yeah, try to try to remove these. Try to up uh, like bring, um, yeah, try to try to make a make there actually be this like neutral level or this like level playing field that doesn't currently exist. Obviously. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll get through this section. So I'm um, just reading on page 32. Um, this allows the defensiveness of Western mathematics to prevail without addressing underlying causes of why certain groups of students are underperforming, a characterization that should also be interrogated. It also presupposes that good math teaching is about a Eurocentric type of mathematics devoid of cultural ways of being. Whew. 
all right well let's see i don't know what that means okay but we'll... so it'll so uh, hang on let me let me parse this again <laughs> yeah so it allows the defensiveness of western mathematics to prevail without addressing the underlying causes of why certain so th this is kind of our whole conversation right like uh -huh. we're, we're like they're there's a defensiveness happening right now in this conversation about Western mathematics and the way that it's the way that we teach it specifically here. And we're and we're, we're talking about it in the context of there being a specific disparity with specific racial groups, racialized groups in this in this field, like or not especially, but like we're talking about it in terms of math because this book's about math. Um, and there is a disparity in terms of, of math achievement. And so like we're, we're, if we want to look at the underlying causes of why certain groups are underperforming in math, then uh, uh, we have we have to be critical of a lot of these things. As we a department engage, study ethnomathematics right? and incorporate into all classrooms, do I need to study ethnomathematics to know why black people do bad in math classes in schools? Wait, I mean, maybe, but like, wait, it also presupposes that good. Oh, it, wait, where, where was where's that line? Is that, you're talking about the next line. It's it says a Eurocentric type of mathematics. Or was it a different? Uh, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with what you're reading. Um, I'm just at the um, bottom of page 31. It's 32 in the doc, but it says instead, learn about authentic and cultural ways of teaching and learning that represent the students in your classroom. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying. I Wikipedia what ethnomathematics is, so maybe this isn't a fair representation. Mm -hmm. But the following is a sample yeah, of some of the definitions of ethnomathematics proposed between 1985 and 2006. The mathematics mm -hmm. which is practiced among identifiable cultural groups such as nation, tribe, societies, labor groups, mm -hmm. children of certain age brackets, and professional classes. The mathematics implicit in each practice. The study of mathematical ideas of a non-literate culture. The codification which allows a cultural group to describe, manage, and understand reality. Um, the study well, and I, presentation I, I think, of mathematical ideas of traditional peoples. Sorry, go ahead. I, I think I think a lot of these are interesting. I mean, like like the like, uh, in fact, I think the that that traditional peoples. Although we should come back to the non-literate culture one because I think there's stuff to dive into there too. Um, but like the study and presentation of mathematical ideas of traditional peoples. So like, do you think that there might have been some like mathematical strategies? and mathematical concepts that were taught in a certain way or in a different way in like native in like some native american tribes that have been like practically eliminated maybe but i don't think that that explains the gap in education between certain racial groups and white people do you understand that everything no, you're saying I'm, is implying well, that like the way that they learn was just better for their native brains no, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Okay, I, I'm, maybe, trying, maybe I'm being really, like really, that. really good faith. So I'm like, I'm, I'm meeting you. I know, where you're I appreciate at, it. But I'm saying that like, I could slam you without it every single statement you're making. That's like the that is like the implication that is dripping with every single thing you say. That like, I, it, but but I think I think that the fact that a, all, a lot of these concepts are being discussed in a context where like the underlying premise is already accepted that there isn't this like biological category of race that these the, people's brains are fundamentally different. Like that we're that's talking what it feels about like specifically you're at. Like I feel effort. like I'm trying to imagine if I was like a black person and I went to a teacher and I'm like, listen, my kid is failing math. Like, what should I do? And the teacher hands me a book on like, try ethno mathematics. <laughs> I'm like, what the. F and I like open well, it up I mean, and like it, page one is like some dude in a f***ing Kwanzaa f***ing outfit or something. Or I don't know what the f***. Or not, I don't even know what the name of the crazy holidays are for the black holiday shit. But whatever, Jesus. I don't know. Is, this is just, that, it feels is that characterization of Is that characterization of approaching ethnomathematics, is that is that a good faith like, I response don't know. to like- I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Do you think so? I don't know. Like looking at, looking at these bullet points, is that is, is that like what you get? That like I, I'm being like, totally honest with you. I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, that's, I mean, I think that's fine. I think it's okay to, I'm not sure either. Like, I, I'm not sure about a lot of this stuff. I don't know why, like, I, I, again, I didn't study all this shit, like, like in school or anything. Like I learned about this stuff like more recently and I started learning like deeper and deeper into it because I saw all of these, uh, like I saw the James Lindsay's and the Chris Rufo's running around and they're talking about how, how critical race theory is teaching all the white kids that they're pieces of shit and it's teaching all the black kids that they're, they're like, they're oppressed in every, I, I, like, every single This is, here, moment listen, of their if I'm going to be, yeah. okay. <sighs> I'm in, my brain is in hyperdrive, high level idea mode to try to good faith the f out of this, okay? 
Here it could be like a realistic example that I could maybe think of that would thread the needle flawlessly and make this kind of stuff okay to me, okay? If somebody were to say something like, listen, okay, black students should learn in base 60 instead of white students learning in base 10. And the, ex and the explanation is that the descendants of African Americans in the United States oftentimes didn't have formal math classes, but they had to learn the f watch because working around the clock or whatever was really f important uh, based on what their slave masters told them and the lack of access that African Americans had to education and teaching their children to measure things based on time is a tradition that is commonly passed down in African American communities in ways that white people don't. So when you're engaging with a black student mathematically, the uh, the value of like the, t the clock and time and base 60 systems might allow them to understand certain mathematical concepts easier than a white student. When you try to struggle with a black student teaching them that a quarter is 25, a quarter is 25 and they're not understanding it the same way a white student would, maybe teaching that a quarter can be 15 because the quarter of an hour is 15 minutes might be an easier way to teach it. Like that would be an example where maybe if you're trying, if I'm trying super fucking hard to meet you into some place where maybe that would be an example that I wouldn't even know as a white person could work. Okay. That's like the, that's like the Dr. Strange looking into the future and seeing one good reality out of 999 million bad ones. Okay. But there are so many other ways that I could see this as being bad. Like those charts where they're like, uh, being on time is a white supremacist structure. Keeping schedules is white supremacy. They're literally doing the CP time thing, colored person time that like, oh yeah, black people are late because they just don't value time like white people. That's all the problematic shit that I see emerging from this. And I don't, I'm not hearing any really good examples. And if you could give me a good example, that's what I'm asking earlier. Like if you give me some good examples, mm -hmm. because by the way, there might be some things about black people that I just don't know, right? Like I learned very early growing up and I saw this later in the Dave Chappelle joke, black people are really big on washcloths and white people oftentimes aren't. I wouldn't have known that shit if every time I didn't go to a black friend's house, they didn't have a washcloth in every fucking bathroom and you were never supposed to use the bar of soap on your fucking hands directly. I didn't know that until I had fucking black friends and they showed me that at an early age, right? That might be an example of something that I wouldn't know as a white person. But if I'm not getting any of these examples and I'm just hearing, well, they're different, well, they're different, well, they're different, I'm wondering at the end of the day, like, like biologically, like genetically, like are black people like Wakandan warriors? Like, I don't know what that means without any examples, right? That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> okay. I, I think the, that, that elaborate uh, clock example is is maybe it's in the direction of of where a lot of these things might emerge from, but it's it, it, I don't think it has to be necessarily that um, like I don't think it necessarily has to be traced back that far. Um, but I, I think um, I again I, I do think that the the underlying like the starting point for a lot of these conversations being the understanding that race is not this this like this uh, this the combination of physical and behavioral traits that can be like there's some essence to these different racial groups i think having that foundational understanding of what race isn't is really important to yeah, even having any is, of these conversations in the first place which is why great, but which is why we, which, which is why when you jump to the next part and you're like well mm -hmm. this sounds like you're actually saying that it's like well hang on but like we're yeah, explicitly this is, this, not we're, we're saying, saying the opposite it's explicitly. all theory this is all theory though right i understand what you're saying but it's all theory i need example this is why when i do debates now and i've tried this for like six months if i'm talking yeah. about an academic thing for every single thing i talk about i'm gonna have a, at least one example if not multiple examples so that i can like this is what i mean this is what i mean this is what i mean but everything you're saying right now everything you're saying could be something that nick fuentes is saying without examples because everything you're saying i, I don't think nick fuentes would ever engage with any of this stuff <laughs> at, dude nick fuentes would have a field day dude I, I i shouldn't even mention it because i could give this dude like he could literally if i was nick fuentes i would take a lot of the crt material and i would do a 30 minute segment on my stream where we do like black math hour and we take like one page of this and we show like oh today we're gonna learn black math hour right rather than uh worrying about tests black people are gonna see who can clap the most complicated rhythm from a tupac song and then i would have three people in blackface do it and we would take it out of our crt book and that would be my content for the day <laughs> Yeah, like Fuentes okay, could so do it I, word for no, word, no, writing you're, you're, all of this shit, right? Like, you're, you're you're definitely right to say that Nick could find like some really like terrible misrepresentation of any of these ideas. And, you say and misrepresentation, that, but, but like, he'd be even, following the text pretty closely. There, like, you, were, you were talking about people in blackface and, and doing Tupac songs, like 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 you're well, already he, so there far be many, from, They like, wouldn't have. Okay, if you just replace them with black people, okay, I don't know how many black people he has. Like, 
But like today we're doing uh, like, was, oh, what's up, least, guys? Like, did you guys remember to bring your tap shoes for math class today? And his three fans were like, yeah, of course we did. That's good because today we're going to learn multiplication. And we all know that the only way to learn that would be. And then he'd turn on like Billie Jean from fucking, you know, Michael Jackson. Thriller would start playing. It's like dancing. But again, that's how black none, people of, learn none, of, none of these things, no point in any of this stuff is saying that there's one way that black people need to learn math or learn any concept. No, but it's saying like, that it needs to be different. It has that. to. It seems like it's different from white people. That's why we need ethnic. No mathematics. That would if we have, if we have specific, if in a specific subject we have, we have different outcomes in math, like math, in like success in math classes, between like a racial disparity in success in math classes, then there are going to be things on average that are going to apply to black students that won't that won't necessarily uh, be as useful to apply to white students. What does that like, mean? What do, you, what, what do you mean? What, uh, what, what specifically means, is applying to yeah. black students that isn't applying to white students? What specifically is applying to black students? Uh, well, I'm, um, I, I, I guess that there are. See, this is this is my this is where I like I, I wish I had like more of these like like hard examples of like yeah, ways me too. These things. Well, but like yeah. I'm just saying, like if we have all the if we have all the things. Inventing this. I, didn't, I didn't write all these things. Okay. The main reason for coming in here is that I, I want to encourage you to try to have a better faith engagement with this material and rather than really rather than expecting faith, me to have like it's really oh, bad. I, I, I don't, but, but you haven't been. You might be right now, and I appreciate it. And I'm glad that we're having this conversation. And thank you, seriously, for bringing me on. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I'm glad I'm, I'm maybe I, I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm going to be able to like defend this shit to the grave in every single context. But I, I am I, I'm saying that like the people who put these things together, they're not all insane people who are who are who are if you ask them questions about these things would say it's not my job to educate you, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I think there's a lot underlying this that, that has just been completely like blown over. And because you look at the you look at some sentences and you're like, well, this sounds bad. Nick Fuentes could use this to say some bad things. So so it's not even worth engaging with. I'm asking you to give an example of something that would justify these sort of changes you're describing. And you're lost. You're totally what's this, lost. What, what's the specific? Wait, hang on. What, like what, I which, asked, give what an is, example of one of the changes that I proposed that you the one example for. I asked a second ago, what is an yeah. example of something that applies to black students that doesn't apply to white students that justifies these changes in curriculum? And you can't give an answer. Does that like does that bother you? Um, a little bit. Yeah, I wish I had better answers. I would like to. That's why I'm having these conversations. Okay. Gotcha. Anything else? Wait, you're the one hey, here. We got him. <laughs> Chase. <laughs> okay, so this is like this is okay, so I scrolled ahead. I'm cheating a little bit. So I scroll down to the 77 out of 83. So how do I dismantle power structures in the classroom? Participation structures reinforce dominant ways of being. White supremacy culture shows up in math classrooms when participation structures reinforce dominant ways of being. Classrooms are often microcosms of the world around us and reinforce dominant or white ways of being. For example, small groups of students receive the teacher's attention throughout the instruction, and a few students are typically called into participating in class discussions, reinforcing notions of perfectionism. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. The patterns of students who fall into these categories often mirror societal norms. Another common participation structure is pairing students as helper and helpee. This reinforces paternalism and other power structures that identify students as either being good or bad at math also either or thinking. Also requiring students to raise their hand before speaking can reinforce paternalism and power hoarding, in addition to breaking the process of thinking, learning, and communicating. Instead, create multiple ways of participating that honor myriad ways of thinking and being. Um, for, uh, for example, feel free to work alone in Paris, trios, or quads, classroom activity, mm -hmm. community circles, or storytelling circles, incorporating dance, music, song, call and response, and other cultural ways of communicating. Do black so, people still uh, do call and response? Dude. Uh, <laughs> Fourth thought, do you know any, can you sing any spirituals for me? Bring out your, shut the no, up. Hold on, I feel like I'm in the South Park episode where he's like, uh, hey, what's the name of the black kid? Token. Yeah, he's like, token, go the get your bass. You, I know you can play bass. I know you can play bass. Go get your bass. You got one. He's like, I don't have one. You're black. You got one. He's like, okay, play it. He's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> like, it feels like this is like the actual meme shit. Do you really think so? Do you think yeah. this is like the South Park bit? This is exactly token. like the South Park bit. It feels like Like it. the idea that perfectionism is a white person trait, is a white trait. That's, that's wild. I would, that's I, I think I think. I think one of the important things, again, this is why I started with like yeah, the what is race yeah. conversation. I gotta hop in yeah. here. Did I just hear you say 
do black people still do call and response? Yeah. Yo, another do weird they? person hopped in. Have you listened to jazz or blues or any of the music that we talked about? Do you, th first of all, who plays jazz and blues today? <laughs> Hold on. Who do you think plays jazz everyone, and blues today? Everyone does. Uh, everyone white does. people. It's white people. Yeah. yeah. Jazz and everyone blues today does. is played by white people. Go into any school, look at any performer, go in any club in New York, and it's 95% white people playing jazz today. So stop. Ja Black people on average are not walking down the streets of their urban neighborhoods doing call and response. Please. That's not what I'm saying. You're literally like saying that there's no art. Okay, you're you just you just frame that as if there were no artifacts of call and response still present. By the way, in this discussion, I agree with you in terms of this CRT stuff's kind of crazy. I, so I'm not on this person's side defending. I just want to say like. <laughs> There are definitely still cultural artifacts of that in the culture. Sure, like, and so I gave a yeah. really complicated yes. example earlier that I agree maybe, with the clocks. I thought yeah, your yeah, yeah, was great. Sure. No, no, I agree with that. Yeah. No, no, I thought that was great. So, I agree with your yeah, point. So I'm when I saying, say, yeah, when you, you say, pretend like there's no call and response left in like that culture at when all. When I like, think of like call crazy, and you know? when I think of call and response, I think of like mm -hmm. Negro spirituals and call and response in slave fields picking cotton. I, if you can I, give me I an example, I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Wait, wait, wait. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. If you can give me an example maybe and i'm very white okay i admit that if you can give me an example of like how black people today in common society still use call and response then i'll be like oh, okay i didn't know that i didn't know that black people still did call and response a lot so give me an example i mean hip-hop ad libs are one of the best examples of a call and response form that have been modernly adapted please do not say music. that black people need hip-hop to learn math that's not what i said so i don't think all. that black kids I'm are you asked, okay, look, you literally asked for a specific example of where call and response has a modern adaptation, and I oh, said, Bro, we're we're actually, like we're, actually, we're that's like hype, right? That's what the progressives hype are, is. it's, it's over. Like a responsorial form yeah, but I, back, I don't, filling in the gaps. First of all, I'm pretty sure that like most of the people that listen to rap today are probably white kids okay i don't think that this is like unique to like black okay, that's structure what I'm, talking about. I'm not that's I what i'm asking about not, i'm asking about what's unique not, to black look, children i'm not arguing that it's like unique like a gen i don't think it's like a gen i don't think it's anything like that i don't I'm even think genetic i'm asking like culturally i'm asking i'm asking culturally what's unique like, to black right. people culturally hip-hop is not a black thing anymore it came from black communities but that's like the whole fucking world listens to hip-hop white there, kids but, listen to fucking hip-hop but but there are still ten. there are still elements and threads of that tradition that are from that it's not like yes of course of course it's all every, anyone can make whatever music they want of course it's all accessible now and, and that's a great thing that we can make art and it's accessible but what i'm just saying is that doesn't change the fact that there are cultural threads baked into that i understand you what know? you're saying that's what yes, i'm looking for that's what i'm asking for i just want to know like what are those like let's say okay let me ask this question okay I'm a teacher and I'm going to school, okay? And I find out, yeah. fuck, 95% of my kids are black. But when oh I was God, in Discord, Yura Bia, she told me, she gave me the sick advice. She said, well, for black kids, there's a part no, of their I culture never, that's gonna make it easier for them to learn math. What am I calling on in my mind? What am I thinking <laughs> of for, okay, I could teach black kids math because I learned this ability in my Discord on February 3rd. What would I be recalling from there? What would you have told me? I don't know. I mean, I think that, yeah, I don't, I'm not here to debate the education. Show. I think you should educate people uh, similarly, generally. Dude, I think why did you even join? You join this to what about is a me? A white woman to just actually, coming to take over a racial conversation? Oh, Imagine my music. shock. No, I mean, it's just, how can you say it? Like, where's the call and response in black? Call? It's obviously still in the music. Like, but we're not talk I'm to talking, I'm asking, that. where is the call and response so that obvious. is like unique to black people that would help them learn math better? That's, that's what the context of this discussion is. Okay, well, okay. I wouldn't say that's there. So yeah, okay. I, I'm not wow. there to defend that. Thanks I, for the well, actually, okay. So, so to, to what you were just saying about like, what, what things should I come away with when I'm like, if I'm going into this classroom, I don't think that there should ever be like one single thing that you're focused on. If you're entering that situation, I think you would want to have some com some large combination of a lot of these different things in mind. And you would, you'd probably like not even like, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be that simplistic. Like I, I wouldn't advise you to just like engage over this one on February 3rd and then dive in. Like it, it would be a long, it would be a long-term process. Like you're, you're, you're gonna have to learn a lot more, and I'm 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 here to learn more about this, and like like to try to engage with this in a, in a, a good faith way, and encourage other people to engage with this stuff in a way that's very different from it, the way that's traditionally represented. Sure. Okay. Here's what I would say. This would be my suggestion: is if you can, give me like a few examples, like just two of any of this stuff, and then I would be like super keen to listen because. Otherwise, it just I mean, again. Well, I mean, there are examples in this book. Like it talks about verbal examples and stuff, but you 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 I, I don't know a lot of them like. 
Because I said that we I agreed uh, for a lot of these things. I think they're okay, but when they're Caribbean, framed, your mic's gone. when they're framed okay. racially, they get really weird. If somebody were to tell me, "Hey, listen, I think that we could actually teach math in like big group assignments where we do kind of like weird like dancing things. Like we could do polyrhythms and teach kids this for doing like division or something." Like, "Oh, that's really interesting, sure." But if somebody tells me, "I have a lot of black kids in my class, so I'm going to start using dance to teach them math," it feels way different. It's taken on an entirely different character at that point. That's the, that's the, the issue I have with the be, whole book. Yeah. I, I think the goal would be with your class, like it would be to try to un, like communicate with them and understand what pieces of this might be really might be more relatable to them. And you might find that a lot of these verbal examples that they go over in these different sections might apply disproportionately on average to black students than to white students. It might be more beneficial on average to black yeah, students. I'm just curious students. for any Overall, of these. Like for, I just scrolled randomly. So in 67, right? White supremacy culture shows up in math classrooms when there's a greater focus on getting the right answer rather than understanding concepts and reasoning. It would be good if everybody did this. And for the verbal example, come up with at least two answers that might solve this problem. Classroom activity, challenge standardized test questions by getting the right answer, but justify other answers by unpacking the assumptions that are made in the problem. That's totally fine. And any good math teacher, once you're past fucking algebra, when you start getting into calculus, any good teacher is giving you points based on steps in a problem. The answer, you can get in a good calculus class, you can get every answer wrong and still probably get at least a D on the fucking test. As long as your process sure. was good, or maybe more, depending on the types of problems you're doing, right? So that this has nothing to do with being white. It's just like a better way to like teach math in but some cases. It, it doesn't have to do with like having white skin, but it, it does, it, if the disparity could be improved, the disparity in education that we do see, if that could be improved by implementing some of these practices and that they might disproportionately benefit students of color, that would be a good thing, right? Sure, but I would just, I would never frame it racially. But what we're talking about, we're talking about a racial education gap. We're talking about ra racial dip like disparities in mathematics. A racial education. Like how can you not frame that racial? Like very how can we easily. Talk about that talking very about easily by understanding that the <laughs> racial education gap doesn't come from the racial aspect. It comes from probably largely socioeconomic and some cultural aspects. But, but this is why the initial conver the initial like framing of this whole conversation is that we're talking about race as something that's not just we're not referring to skin color we're referring to the way that your like someone's skin color might have positioned them in society based on their family's history. And yeah, but even the skin, but even what you're saying there, it gets more in particular because skin color doesn't work. Of course, okay, because African immigrants are on a whole other level than African Americans, right? But when you frame this through well, like skin color and white supremacy culture, you're just missing so much. And then even when I'm pushing it's not, on, it's not one God. size fits all. It's never yeah, going to be one the size liberal, fits That's all. my answer. That's the liberal answer. It's not one size fits all. You have to meet students where they are. But you're the one that's saying that like race has to be an important compart uh, component of this. Race has to be an important co topic if we're talking about specifically reducing the racial disparities. That because that that, that how, I hold don't on, I don't understand. Hold on, wait, 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 I, I understand. We have to okay, get over this. Okay, because you're you're doing a huge yeah. logical non sequitur. Okay? okay. So let's say that I have a group of students who are all Indian. Okay, and I fucking starve them all to death for two years. Okay, and then I throw them in a classroom with a whole bunch of white kids. Okay, I have created a massive racial gap in educational attainment. Just because there's a racial gap in educational attainment because of malnutrition, it's because of malnutrition. It doesn't mean that I need to address it on a racial way. Like, oh, we need to treat Indian kids differently than the white kids. That's not true. It means there's a problem that well, is, it might be like unique to that like group of people, but it's not because they're that group of people. I just need to make sure that everybody's getting food. Well, I, I, I agree. It's not, it's not because they're those people. But it's because of the it's because of the way that again like in this in your in your hypothetical like it's because of the way that you treated them the, that group of people historically yes and, and but not because of here, their right? race I, so I agree with that no, it's, it's, it's not, the the racial divide is not caused by race it's caused by other factors in society like socioeconomics what, at the outset I asked you like what is race and like critical race theorists would argue that it's it's not just a social construct but it, it was historically a legal construct. Right. They, they, they're like, the, like, you know, like, like ha having the property of whiteness was like allowed you into certain institutions and having like not having that property of whiteness disallowed you. That's and really fine. Impact, like, but when I ask you today, today right? but then I'm going to do I'll do the fucking MAGA hat wearing conservative dipshit question. And I'll say, OK, well, what are the laws preventing math people from doing well in math today or preventing black people from doing well in math today? 
well, as, if you if you accept that there are like still impacts from those systems being in place that still like disproportionately like put people in, in different socioeconomic conditions. Sure. So socioeconomics, though, because parents aren't passing laws onto their children. Right. You can't pass Jim I, I don't Crow know if education onto your child. Is not a socioeconomic like education is a socioeconomic. No, factor. no. Hold on. Careful. Education was not socioeconomic. Education was racial. When you were black, you went to certain schools. When you were white, you went to certain schools, right? That's what segre segregation was all about. So it used to be that it was a racial problem because it wasn't socioeconomic, it was explicitly based. But now, again, parents don't pass segregation onto their kids. It's passed on through other means like socioeconomics. Your parents are poor. They live in shittier neighborhoods with shittier schools. Sometimes it's a single mom and a single working family, but it's not really like they're black. Yes, but but those like like black people are still going to be less likely to live in certain areas because of the that history and, yeah. and less likely to and, and and because they're also poorer on average, they're going to be less likely to be able to access those white like some of those white neighborhoods or like largely white neighborhoods. Like so, these it, I, what I'm talking about is like that these disparities care like you. I know you agree with this. That these disparities carry on through, mm -hmm. um, and are per, but but I'm saying they're they're not just they don't just carry on through, but they're they're still perpetuated because we're not we're not acknowledging this the racial component of it, which is that like like these, the, yeah yeah I, uh, that's what I, what I view okay. as the racial component. I, guess. I believe but when I say racial component, I'm sure. not talking about anybody's genetics, okay. and, and that's maybe like the the constant okay. disconnect. All right, I believe pretty soon, so I'll give you the I'll give you the final okay. word on this. Um, yeah, I, I'll just I'll just say again. Uh, I think that at the like my my fundamental under, underlying concept and the number the first tenet of critical race theory, despite what James Lindsay or Christopher Rufo or Tuck, you know Tucker Carlson or whatever will tell you, the fundamental underlying con like tenet is that race is not a biological con like concept. That it's not that you can't group people into these distinct. Uh, uh, essences of groups of human beings that are based on their their skin color and their behavior. That these are, this is not a real genetic phenomenon. And and rather and so instead, what we're looking at is the history of the way people were treated based on being perceived of, as part of a certain race. And that this still impacts people in a lot of ways today. And that it's also going to impact uh, it impacts them in every dimension. Uh, obviously, the the justice system, in education, in healthcare, we see these disparities. And so if we look at like one specific example, which is the math classroom, and we see specific, we see disparities there as well, then maybe we can have conversations about how the experience of a black kid in that classroom might on average be a little bit different than the experience of a white student and how they might benefit slightly differently from different uh, from implementing different practices into those classrooms, that those practices might still be good for everybody, but that those students might benefit more from implementing them. And if we're going to talk about specifically reducing that racial differential here, then like I, we can't do that without acknowledging, like talking about race. Uh, and yeah, that's that's my main thing. But uh, I guess uh, if you want to respond to that and then I'll, I'll shout myself out and I'll leave. No, that's good. You're good. Go ahead. Shout I'll respond to it. Oh, Mooten wants to respond to it. Okay, Mooten. I don't give a fuck. Good one. Okay, that's fine. You don't I, have to, I got, but I, got I think you should. Yeah, I got a response, response to that. What's your response, buddy? I, I think um, there are certainly important differences between uh, the races? Racial, educa oh, racial, uh, racial education gaps that should be considered, but I personally think the right way forward with education is to completely restructure and reform education on a more fundamental level. I think that you know education is essentially a form of cognitive technology, and we've barely, like, unlocked half of that tech tree and we're so unoptimal and inefficient at um educating and um i think that the the difference between the racial gap is probably a tiny tiny gap compared to the difference in what we'll get if we go down the educational tech tree further so i feel like it's kind of not noise because it's important to consider in the discussion but i also think like if we're really talking about improving educational outcomes. We should focus on improving educational outcomes for everyone because I think we can actually make multiplicatively better improvements for everyone because our educational system is just so busted Archaic. anyways. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So inefficient <laughs> and horrible. So I agree, yes, it's important, the racial thing, but also like, let's just do better education, period, you know? Yeah, I think that the, yeah. big, the hardest thing for changing education 
is it's like a fucking form of hazing and parents get so fucking triggered when they see their kid learning something different than they learned it which is like the most irritating fucking thing in the world nothing is more f annoying to me than some parent on some fucking youtube video or not tiktok they were vines that's when i heard all the common core complaints they were like we didn't learn math like this when we were in school and it's like yeah you're if you suck shit at math okay your highest mathematical you achievement is like pre-algebra don't you think it's hard for yeah, what? Everyone says they hate math. For like all the when time. the kid comes home and is like, hey, "Oh, can you help me with their homework?" and the parent doesn't know what the fuck's going on. I'm not advocating for not learning Common Core. I'm just saying, can't you empathize with the parent at that level then? No, um, I can empathize I with the parent in terms of it, like maybe taking some more work. But the reality mm. is, is that you're actually just a piece of shit, dog shit parent. And if we lived in a communist utopia or any utopia, your kids would be seized from you for being a lazy fucking retard that wants to ruin your kid's life because you're too stupid to get along with the times just because you learn something a certain way and you're threatened by change doesn't mean that you can destroy your child's life to pursue an education in the future because it scares you to see different symbols or processes like used to learn some concept in school it's the worst thing in the world for me there have been some uncomfortable things that i've had to think about with nathan but usually like the first question when it comes to my mind is always what's in the best interest of my kid that's always mm -hmm. the first thing right like my reaction for adhd medication was immediately because i've never been medicated for any of my life was i will never give my kid a mind-altering drug that's crazy to me right but that's my first instinct but the question i really have to ask is well okay that's my personal feelings on it but like what is my job on this planet to so make sure that nathan does as well as possible so if he does have adhd if it affects him in these ways and if there's ways to alleviate it what the f kind of parent am i taking some moral grandstanding on some f issue and i'm using him as the the chess piece that's being sacrificed to make my moral statements that's an that's a dog shit parent thing to do so yeah i mean i understand I that sometimes it's probably pretty easy for the parent to learn how to do yeah if they want to yeah if they're an adult kids. they yeah. should be able to learn slightly different yeah. ways to do that. or if they don't then they ask the teacher for resources or help like hey like i want my kid to succeed in, in life and you tell me like what's a better way because no offense 99 percent of americans suck at math they barely fucking mm -hmm. learned algebra so the fact that they think they're in any position to critique anybody learning any kind of math is just insane to me but that's i don't know i just i don't like it when parents when parents act like they suffered through something so the kid has to go through the same process it makes it so impossible to change or improve any of the structures that kids are going through in my opinion yeah um yeah i agree with i agree with most of that and, and I, I i i also agree that like uh we should have like a very huge large-scale transformations of how we approach education like broadly dare i say radical um shifts in 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 education um but if we're talking about things that like this whole book seems to be about approaches that like individual teachers can take and, and like small things that they can implement in their classrooms. That Wait, yeah, on hold on, Tom, I already get on last average, word. I understand. We are, I already agree with everything in the yeah, book as long yeah, as the yeah, racial yeah. part is removed. Okay. So I don't know anyway, why you're going to do Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, it's been a long time coming. It was it was good meeting you in Georgia, and uh, it's good to come on here and hash this out deeper. Uh, I'm Ryan or Radical Coder. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be doing a lot more stuff soon. If you look at my channel, you'll see that I've actually uh, been fighting uh, Destiny's Rogues Gallery for the past couple of years, uh, on and off. Um, so uh, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of content there, and I'm hoping to do uh, less. Uh, more, I'm hoping to do more content moving forward with uh, uh, not just people uh, on the far right because uh, I I'm kind of tired of that and I want to have like more good faith engage like conversations about a lot of these things um, that are more productive and uh, yeah I have a, a lot of cool stuff planned this year uh, I'll be streaming a lot so uh, it, yeah it's it's great to be here and uh, I'll see you all soon I'm sure okay someone in chat said tell him to fix his markdown in his first GitHub repo. Oh yeah, my GitHub is, is garbage. But if but if you're judging a coder's ability based on like uh, a barely used GitHub profile, then you're probably not qualified to judge that ability. So wow, or maybe you are your GitHub, and the only thing people can judge you by is your repos. Uh, public repos. Yeah. If they could see my private repos, they might feel differently. Oh really? Private repos. Yeah. How much? How many contributors are there to those private ones though? Uh. A decent amount, I'd imagine. Oh yeah, how many contributions are yours numbers, uniquely offhand. that you've worked on on your own? If you're such a good coder, yeah. Why do you use a Focus <laughs> ST? True. <laughs> got him. Easy. Get him out of here. You got me there. Get him All out of right, here. Bye guys. I love you. Thanks for having me. Love you, buddy. Talk to you soon. <sighs> Another one dominated by me. I had had that one cooking for a while, boys. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Progressives are Yo. like fucked. Hi, what's up? How you doing, buddy? You crushed him. That was brutal. Well, it was. No, it wasn't brutal. I tried to be nice. Wait, this <laughs> no, is the. No, right. you were right about the Fuentes thing, though. I feel like that is he like that book. Uh, yeah. This is the music. 
it's kind of scary. I think he's going to do that now. I think because you vocalized that. It's it was. It's a good idea. It would be funny. Yeah, it would be a funny gonna segment. Canceled. You're going to get. You're going to get canceled because he's going to do that. And then you can just call the like, section oh God, ethno mathematics. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to say you created it. So get ready for that. You know, preemptively. Uh, Is this yourself. the music lady who blew you the f out, Steve? Uh, yeah. No. This is the one that <laughs> yeah. rambled, gish galloped, and said a whole no, bunch of random get, shit. Get and then the she was like, oh, well, I, I was totally right. <laughs> I said nothing random. Nope. I didn't say random. I said yeah. rambled. But that's cool. You oh, know, we rambled. like ramblers here, you know? I did. I will say I was a little, uh, little, little impulsive. A little heated. ADHD that day for sure. That's a little heated, You know, yeah. what happens? No, Honor to fun. meet someone else who's beat Steven a debate. Oh, oh yeah. It's rare. Also, oh, wait. Actually, I think I was told that... Maybe um, I uh, you gave Destiny perhaps his biggest L ever. Is that true? In the McDonald's debate, almost certainly. <laughs> You're yes. so wrong. Or no, no, no. There was oh one bigger God. one. The biggest L that he ever took was Balcony Gate. No, I, dude, I, I absolutely destroyed him on that one. Actually, blind. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, I do have to leave in like five minutes. What do you want? What are you coming here for? Oh no, I'm just. Yeah, I came to talk music, but oh, cool. I, I didn't know the topic. I, I heard the CRT thing, but when I heard you say like- Oh, call and response. Like, no you were just like, response. oh my God. Like, call and response time, shows up in music bunch, everywhere. I, yeah. I still have an uns unsettled score uh -huh. to, uh, to finish with you, so. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, we're gonna but set that one up, okay? After I come back good, from yeah. some country, okay. Wow. Yeah, you Did be you beat my okay? rhythm score? What's your what? Yeah, what's everyone's top rhythm score? I want to join. I think I had like a nine sixty seven. <laughs> no, no, you did it. No, I did. I did. And there's a clip of it somewhere. Someone linked the clip. Someone linked the clip. Someone linked the clip. Uh, Someone linked the clip. Uh, you know, linked the clip. I, I've got good rhythm, but I I think my highest so far is like a nine oh five, nine eleven. I don't know. It's kind of it's harder than I thought. Well, I mean, I got a nine forty two. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> well, but. don't I, well don't make me a. Uh, take the johns you know where it's like i think my keyboard's broken i'll have to get a new one in order to beat you oh i find I, mine actually is I'm broken i'm johns. serious i don't know what a johns no. means but it's a it's from like uh smash where it's like you make an excuse it's like making an excuse for being shitty why would smash have a particular word for making an excuse for being shitty well the story goes a long time ago in the early 2000s there was a player named john and he would always come up with the most ridiculous excuses like my controller's broken like my fingers are broken like oh there's lag on the monitor when it's like crt mm -hmm. so over the years it became sort of uh icon iconized i, I don't know what the word iconic is that, but yeah. iconic as uh salty johns you know no johns so people can preemptively cancel your johns by saying no john or no salty johns Mm -hmm. You can even do pre john where you start complaining before you get to the event, and then it's like you've almost like pre johned Gotcha. Pretty you're like yeah. you're like making excuses to lose, basically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Okay. Hmm. But yeah, have a great rest of your night. Nice meeting you, uh, Mr. Mr. Mooten, the legend. Um, Mr. Mooten, yeah. I'm a retired yeah, like I said, orbiter. I've, Destiny, I've followed you for a bit, but I don't like actively. I'm not like always watching or whatever, so I don't know all the characters, but it's nice to uh, meet you, Mr. Mooten. Don't worry, I'm Tom. retired. <laughs> you're reti you retired? No, he's coming oh, back. I just left the factory, so we're going to meet up again. <laughs> yeah, got you. Yeah, how'd that go? Which part? Oh, I the finished. The final? The close? Yeah. Well, kind of, it's the first part. There's a secret ending, but I'll work on it in the background. I'm not like obsessed. I'm free from the mm. obsession, okay? Yeah. You're actually not going to relapse. Well, no, because I beat the the first part. Did you play Did you, Did you? you play today? Uh, Well, yeah, I'm just. but I work on it in the background now. I don't have to. He doesn't really know how to play piano, though. He kind of just does. We're not talking about rhythms. piano. What are you talking about? Why did you bring that up into nothing? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, it's true, though. Might have how brought it up you, randomly, how, but it's true. How, Why would you... how long have you been playing piano for? Yeah, Mooten. How long have you been pl playing piano for? Yeah, Mr. Mooten. Uh, how long have you been playing piano How old am I? 25? For? So probably like 17 years, I think. Play something. Nice. Yeah. I don't have the it. piano hooked up to my mic. Sorry. Oh, so you don't like, you're just, yeah. If you don't have one set up right next to you, you probably... I play live, not on for random people on the internet, Steve. Oh, mm. okay. If you want to hear me perform, mm. you can buy a ticket if you'd like. Okay. Ooh. Wow. Really? Do you actually play? Yes. No. I didn't know if you were memeing or He's not. He's fucking like, memeing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't tell. He's memeing. Click my link. Look at my rhythm score. Yeah, it was a 941. Oh I've done better. Yeah. I've gotten okay. higher. Okay, where's your clip? Link Click me your clip. Click your rhythm score. Link me your higher one. You literally said 967. Do you understand the difference? Hey, well, I forgot. Uh huh. This was my second time doing it, by the way. Yeah. Okay. You, pull one your up right second, now. Before you gotta time? go. Before you gotta go, let's see what you got. Okay. Has anyone has anyone got a nine eighty yet? 
Um, I'm about to right now. Give me, hold on, I'm muting okay, you guys. Hold let's on. be quiet for I'm muting you I gotta guys. open your stream. <sighs> okay, guys. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay. Let's fucking go, guys. Let's fucking go. <sighs> okay, channeling my inner call and response, okay? Shit got shit got up the start. It threw, what is this? This should be thirty points higher. That should be at least a nine ten. Shit got. What my whole stream is lagging. Everything is say? lagging. Everything Yo, lagged. Everything I called lagged. it. We took we we took a side bet and I won. Let's Everything go. lagged. Everything lagged. What is this first hit? The shit obviously is fucking I know. lagging. And I even said I even said when that hit happened I was like ooh that one's late. Ooh, I heard Shut it. Shut up. No, it was late because the nah. stream was delayed, okay? Mr. Mr. Mouton, he, he guessed 902. You're watched, I guess, old man. I guess, Shut I up. guess 890. I guess 890. Okay. I'm going to use my mouse. I'll let me try I one more time. I I'm sorry. The market. Let me Side do it one time. Hold on. Fuck. Okay. We're good. We're good. My shit is just my shit is fucked. Okay. <laughs> Let's see you two throw one up. I I don't need to. I hit I hit at nine forty one and I retired, little bro. You're, you're trash. I'll go. All right. Well, I well, yeah. You throw one up. Go ahead. You want me to try to throw one up? Yeah, and then all screenshot right, of right, or, or tell us. Too. We'll right, do right, honors right, and stuff. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I need to leave. I need to leave after this. So this is your our final performance. Good luck. Well, Don't we fuck could, up. We could, we could, we could, we can always save it. Well, how good we are you at typing? We could do a got, how good we could are you do at got rhythm off? How are you good at typing? Uh, I'm really good. <laughs> what does really good mean? Uh, I average about 130. I peak around 170, 175. Average of 130. Yikes, fam. Oof. Is that slow or fast? I pretty. Know. I mean, you know, pretty it's good. it's like okay. Now I don't I, know okay, if I would. I, I, okay. I plateaued at my peak at uh -huh. around like 135 for like 10 years, and then I bought a mechan my first mechanical keyboard, mm -hmm. and my like first like five types I did on it were like 160, 170, but uh -huh. I average around 130. Where you got a skedaddle to so quickly? Uh, my gym closed at 11, so. Oh, all right. Yeah. I love you guys. Ha what? Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll got rid of them off yeah, later. Yeah, we will. Okay. All right. Have fun. Take be care. careful. Be well. Bye. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Ah, now it's just you and me. We got rid of all I gotta the do my, losers. Yeah, I gotta do my outro. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be trying to summon Dan back to the stream, so uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to do a little satanic ritual tonight, and maybe we can get all three of us back. That's my That's my outro. Good luck. Emer okay. uh, DGGL. Be careful. Bye-bye. Okay. You too.